Then we're going to mount a flying duck. In this case, it's like a soaring pole. Right turn. In case it happens to be a wood duck. Now we're going to skip a duck. The only thing is, if you're doing like a like a flying bird, a final approach or something, you want to run uh, wires to the wings. But for a standing or something like a swimming, where the wings are going to be like tucked on top of the back, um, then you're not going to need uh, wires run to the wings. In fact, it'd be a little bit of a, it'd be an aggravation trying to get the wings to do what you want them to do. So, uh, but now we're going to get started. Here's what we got to do. Okay, we need to, so we find our midsection right there on the bone. You can feel that bone. And you just cut up underneath all the way down to about where the anus is. A lot of times I'll run to like maybe one side or other side of that bone. I mean, it's, it's kind of a good guide to tell you where you need to cut. So I'm working my way straight down towards the anus, cutting from underneath, making sure I'm under the skin. Let's see, we've got our separation here. Here's the breast bone. There's membrane just up, uh, just under the skin where it uh, connects to the meat, and we start separating that. Yeah, the legs are good and uh, thought out. This is a good thought out bird. Yeah, I just run my tip of my razor. I just get up and peel the skins. See the skin starting to peel back. So that's kind of what we got going on. I'm just kind of helping it out a little bit. I always get to them from underneath. Basically, I'm just running this, separating the membrane. Go towards the top. I don't go far past the the breast or anything. I just want to stay within reason. I don't want to uh, make my incision like all the way halfway up the neck or anything. So I can see a little bit of that membrane. I pull back and just run my blade. Pull back, run my blade over that membrane stretched out and watch it separate. I do the same thing on this side.
down here. Oh, about an inch or so above the anus, I guess. Start working my way out from the center of the incision. Pull back, see a little bit of membrane, run my sharp edge over that membrane and watch it separate. Just watch it separate. Do the same thing to the other side. Watch it separate. You see the meat on the inside here. Yeah, you just pull back and just run your point of your knife over it and watch it separate. Just like you do any kind of bird, a turkey, they all skin out the same way. So I'll I keep working on this and then I'll, I'll get back with you when we do something a little bit different. Yeah, there's a little breastbone right there. You can get the edge of your knife and just kind of run. I've been going up the this side of it. I mean, it's, it's right up the side of that bone. You get up under there, under the skin. Cut straight up. And see how that separated real good? And then... Everything is good. Just keep on separating. Work down the side. Go as far as you can. Until we get to some joints we need to cut through. A little on this side. down getting down close to some leg joints here in a little bit Okay, here's around the anus. Well, I'm still far, but I guess you say the tailbone and all that stuff. So I'm just running my blade, separating membrane, going down, down a little bit more, going down. Get a little borax in there if you want to, if you need it. Kind of keep things from sticking and what have you. I do a lot of separating right here on this side. I just take everything as far as I can go. Kind of freeze me up on the I'm on space or what I need to do. If you got it skin as far down on the side, it helps because you're getting close to I'm running right along here right there at the if you caught that tailbone, I'm skinning out around that tailbone. Here on the other side, see that that membrane there and just running my sharp point of my knife along it bringing it down and here on 
other side. I'll go as far down as I reasonably can without uh, doing any serious damage. Same with the other side. Pull out just slightly enough to see that membrane so I can run my corner of my knife over it. Right up here, let it separate it a little bit. Okay, we're pretty much where the legs are. Separate a little bit more right here. Free it up a little bit above it so it takes his breast down a little bit. Yeah, you can just see the little, there's a meat and doing a little separating there and just pull back and Run there, right there, right there. Okay, and like I do with birds and all that stuff, I like to expose that knee joint. It's right there anyway. And I can see it right here. I can feel the, I can feel where the two uh, parts of the knee come together. I can feel it with my finger. Well, what you can also do is Get you something to snip that joint right in half. I don't know if you can see it real good, but there is a, yeah, the joint. And uh, it wants to separate good anyway, right there where that joint is, because it's just cartilage. And uh, yeah, if it's going to separate, that's where it will separate. What is this? this right here? And a lot of times, I don't know, I probably skin, should skin out better first, but as soon as I see that joint, I cut through it. I can always worry about skinning things out a little bit better later, but let's see. Well, let me, okay, here on that side of the leg, on this side of the leg. Okay, you can see it right here. It's uh, the knee joint. You can't, you can't, you can't beat it. I mean, you can't mistake it. And to make sure I find it, a lot of times I'll do a couple little soft snips just to make sure I find that cartilage, so I can uh, make sure I cut right through it where it needs to be cut through. And it's got to be right in here. There it goes. See? And I didn't cut through any skin or anything. And then I just, uh, yeah. There it is. I'll even skin the leg out just a little just to show it to you. Um, but here it is. And it is separated. Our hemostats can kind of help you see what's going on, but yeah, but all birds skin out the same way. You just just don't want to cut through any skin or anything, and kind of helps hold things. They're going to run my point of my knife over the edge. Oops. I don't worry about holding legs up or anything on my ducks like I would a turkey or something. But yeah, you can see here's 
is separated, but there's still still some stuff holding it. Let's see what we got here. There we go. It's a little tendon still trying to connect a little bit. It's just like a mini drumstick. Bring it on down, bring it on down. Let's see, bring it on down. That's your drumstick. And you can skin all the way down to about where the knee is. And uh, we'll do that later. But that's how you disconnect it. You just have to say that's separate. That's the drumstick. You gotta skin the leg out a little bit more but we'll do that later after we un undo the other one and then we'll go to the wings so basically i found the joint even helped a little bit with a blade where the where the knee joint is then you just snip through it the cartilage separates you just use your shears and uh you just kind of be easy with it you want to make sure you find the joint and just snip through it usually i just decontact my joints first then i worry about like trying to skin out but i wanted to show you kind of I sort of showed you, I sort of just skinned it out a little, but you get the idea. So now you do the other leg the, the same way. And around this tailbone, I get these two tailbone things sticking out. Um, I can free up a lot of that stuff around there. And be careful, it's real kind of tender right in that area. So you just kind of... Kind of free up what you can there. And do the other the same way. So I'm separating that tailbone, bringing it down. So that's kind of what I've got going on. Just run that knife right along that membrane. Got to We're almost to the anus here. So. Kind of want to help out a little bit. You can free all that space around where you're working. It helps. Okay, now. Here we got the leg joint and. There's the knee. Now you can't hardly see it. I'm gonna skin this out a little bit better. Then we bring it down. Let me go up under here. Under here, bring it down. Get a little bit of membrane over that knee. You're over that leg on the inside. Get around that. Get it in a position where I can push it up. Yeah, there it is. I can feel that knee. Can't hardly see it, but I need to try to free some space up a little bit more. Make it easier on everybody. But I showed you once, you've seen it, so you go around the sides here, get down a little bit, just separate that membrane with the edge of the point of your knife. And uh might want to go up this brush play a little bit more if you have to. I mean, yeah. That's pretty good right there. I went all the way up to where the breast uh starts to be off up here before they get to the neck. So that ought to be plenty. Now Here's one side of the breast, and then uh, you've got the other side. So I'm getting close. I want to 
bring that down. What it is, we want to be able to get to that wing, that wing bone that probably should have used so much borax. Makes it hard for y'all to see. But here again, I'm just separating, pulling on the side, and yeah, just basically separating the membrane with the edge of my knife. I'm going to be careful not to try to put any major holes in it. Okay, about as far as I can get on that side. So what it is, I went down right here. Pretty darn close. I should be able to find where that wing bone attaches. Oh, it attaches right here. I can literally feel feel where the wing bone attaches. So try to show you from the side. I don't know if I can. But yeah, it's right. Wing bone attaches. Yeah, I can feel it where it goes into the body, right here. I can even feel feel the joint pretty much. It's right here. I got my finger right there on the joint. Hey, let me cut through a little bit of that breast right there on the side. Just to expose where the joint is. Yeah. And yeah, right here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna snip through that the same way. I'm just cutting through the Cut to the side of the breast. That's a little bit hard to see. If you can see where the skin separates from everything else. But yeah, we got to uh, yeah. cut through. Yeah, there is a. See, we'll just. Uh, Snip through that joint. Yeah, there's a, there's another ball joint right there, or like a joint, and you just have to feel it. You're just snipping through joint cartilage, and it's in between the joint. And you can see I'm kind of working with it. And it went right through it. There's where it is, right there. On the back of the breast kind of area. Let's see, let me separate. Let you see a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, just snip to that joint. Just like a turkey or anything. And you just snip through that joint. A little bit of that cartilage. And just for the sake of showing you, I'll go ahead and get my hemostats on it. We're going to skin it out after we undo the other joint, but I'm just kind of showing you what we got going on. Okay. See, here's the, here's the wing. Probably want to separate that a little bit. Connected a little bit. You can see I got my hemostats on the wing. When you skin him out, you might want to do this anyway. But I just want to show you. Yeah, you snip through the joint where it connects to the to the breast. And uh, yeah. And I'll even show you again on the other side. It might be a better example. Okay. 
free up a little bit of that skin around it if you can. Let's get the point of my blade and start snipping around. And I'm just separating everything. Using the aid of my fingers to spread things a little. I don't want to tear anything by any means. But, okay, I'll work the upper edge of his breast a little bit. I can free up some of that space. That'll help, too, the, kind of like in the lower neck area. Yeah, that helps a little. Free up some of that space. You get this wing out, and we can feel where it goes into the body. It goes in right here on the side. And uh, just kind of cut into it. Yeah, there's it. There it is. Yeah. You just basically separate cartilage. So I'm going right between the ball and where it goes into it like a big joint. You're just separating it. Yeah, it's that easy. It's like a yeah, big joint. And as it's separated, I may separate some of that meat around it so you all see what's going on. But yeah, there's a joint in there. You can see it right here. Well, it fits inside the other side. It's like a bowl on one side and the ball on the other. And I just uh, just kind of cut through that with your uh, shears and separate everything. I want to grab the end of this wing. And you sort of see what's going on. Just like the other side. Uh, well, let's get it out better. I'm going to go ahead and cut to the tail and all that stuff and hang him upside down. But before I do that, I want y'all to see what's going on. Here's the yeah, here's the wing right here where it's been uh, separated. And just figured I'd show you. That's it. I still got my skin out. We'll do that later. I just kind of wanted to show you what's going on. That's your wing disconnected right there at that joint where it goes into the body. Now we got to do the tail. Keep on skinning. Working the sides. Freeing stuff up. Not only in the front, but on the sides if you can. You got to. Got some leg muscles there that. Help separate things and okay. get to separate that membrane from the skin. So that's all leg muscle connected to the skin a little bit there. You know, that can get that later, I guess. But you can see we're getting close to the tailbone. We're at the anus. Oh, I made sure not to cut through this. There's a lot of stuff right there in the guts here. So I stayed above that for the most part. And uh, just using the edge of my knife. Now we're getting to this anus. We've got to cut through it. There's no way around it. We've got to get to the anus and get to the spine. So I know I'm far enough down, so I'm going to go ahead and cut through it. Okay, there we are. Still free some stuff up on the side here, on both sides. There's your little tailbone thing in my bobs, and we cut through the anus. I'm 
Now, without even guessing, I know where the spine cord, the spine that goes into the tail. You know, you're going to have a little bit extra of that spine attached to your tailbone that you'll get off when you're skinning. So right now, all I'm worried about is breaking it so we can start peeling him back. Well, so I know, just to show you, I could really get my shears right now, just kind of feel for that tailbone. Ooh, I got it. Probably, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and do this. So all this stuff can still be left on the body, though. All this meat here from the, I guess, some of the thigh. And right here is that tailbone. I'm going to cut it just so you can see it. But there's actually some stuff you don't want to cut through, of course. I think I already cut through it right here. But there is spinal cord. Right through it. And this is all skin, you gotta be super careful. Real easy to put a hole in this guy. along the back there. And you can see that's his, he's peeling out. But I want to do a few things to the head. I tend to always forget this. I apologize. But you want to go ahead and it's a good idea to go ahead and take the tongue out now. Open his beak. Make sure it's good and thawed out so you can get it. And let's get my hemostats. Get a good bite on that tongue. Oops. There you go, you pull it out. Toss it. Now we put him up on a skinny gambrel, or in my case, I got like a little hook. And what it does, it's just a piece of wire sharpened on the edge. And it'll hook under one of these tailbone sides. It's pretty much where you put a skinny gambrel too. Well, you know, they'll have some more hooks so for a more secure thing, but I've only got one hook on a rope. But what I'll do is I'll get up under here as far back as I can where it'll grab a lot of meat and everything. Never have any trouble skinning them out. You know, hanging him up and skinning him. Okay, I just got a hook on a rope. It's just a piece of 10 gauge wire with a point on the end of it. Well, now I've got my duck and these little tailbone things. I do just like I do on a turkey. I mean, this holds a turkey up and everything. And uh, I just stick that point as far back as I can along that tailbone where it's gonna grab a lot of meat. Start right here along the back. Super thin skin right back here on the back. And you just wanna be super, super careful with that. Yeah, it's just, it's almost just pure back with a little bit of skin over the top of it. So just go right along the edge of it, right there along the back. 
do as much meat as you can on the skin without uh, cutting through it, you know. It'd be, it's safer to have a little bit of meat on the skin than to cut through it by trying to leave it all on the carcass, so uh, just be careful of that. Keep running it right along there. Still a little bit of meat right in here, I guess, from where it was connected. Uh, you know, worry about that later, but let's see, I'll be getting to the skin here. Yeah, there's the skin. Just, that's a little thin skin right back there. Be a little careful with it. Get over here on this side. Here on this side. It's coming. Now we're getting to the wings. Still working along the back for the most part. We well, got to remember we already made the incision and skin out the front, so it's all uh, it's all down the back, pretty much. And when we get to the neck area, you know, it's going to, see here's where the, right there, right here. Where your the joints we cut through the wings, the wing joints. And we're right here. I could even help it out a little bit. Get on the side of that wing joint and do a little bit more cutting. But there's some meat that's inevitably going to be left on the bird. I'm just going to have to cut through it. And same with the other side. I got my finger just kind of cupping over everything, keeping feathers out of the way. On this side, that side. That side. Over here. I just kind of work the neck around and around.
kind of use the corner of my blade so I don't accidentally make a big old cut anywhere or anything. So we got a long way to go to his neck, or the bottom of his head. So we'll keep on going. Kind of helping it out a little bit. Being careful. On your bigger birds, weight does all this for you, but. You have to kind of help it out on these big light birds or these small light birds. You see, from this, we can determine our neck length or neck width. And you don't always have to go buy a, you know, buy a guide or something. Although they got those guides. Sometimes I go by those guides. What it is is in the catalog. They have uh, um, places for eye color, eye size, for whatever particular bird you're mounting, and even neck width and neck length for the particular bird that you're mounting. So all that comes in handy. But you've also got it if you need it. I mean, you've got it right here. you got, you know, your live specimen. So... When it comes to neck width, body length, and, or body width, or body size, and all that stuff, go by the birds you got, because you may have a, a smaller bird or something, and have to use a bird body from a different bird, because your bird is smaller. I mean, yeah, run into that a lot. So... Let's see, so I'm almost... I'm about as far as I can go anyway. So I'll go a little bit further just to aid so I can uh, ensure to uh, get my shears down in there and snip as close to the base of the skull as you can get. And if you don't get it all the way, um, just remember how much is on the skull and add it to your, your neck length. You know, if you leave three-eighths of an inch of neck material on the bottom of your bird's head. Just make sure to include that in your neck length so you don't have a short neck bird or something. I, I do that sometimes, you know, just if I leave a little bit of neck on there. But I think we're I'm pretty well good right now. So it's not going to be an issue with us. Pretty good. Yeah, that's real good. Now we just get our shears and snip his neck off. Okay, we uh, like to get down in there and I know that's the base of the school right there. Yes. Just took a snip. That's all it took. So throat. There we go. And we use this bird body for wrapping another body. We got our neck width, our neck length. Everything is right here in front of us. And a lot of times, if I, especially if I wrap a body, I just go like to, uh, okay, where the neck comes out of the body. If I'm gonna wrap body, I'm mainly concerned about where he 
connects right here, which looks about like about four and a half. Yeah, about four and a half. It's where it's been cut. Yeah, four and a half exact. So I got four and a half. And then I've got probably a half inch that way. And then this way I've got about three fourths. So I've got three fourths one way, half inch the other. So probably get away with a half inch. I might look at the chart and see if they I uh, recommend a three-fourths or a half-inch. Well, the reference showed uh, uh, five and one-fourth length by five-eighths as far as the diameter. So I think I'm pretty close with this. It's more than a half-inch. I think this is supposed to be five-eighths. So, yeah, about halfway, just in five-eighths, uh, right... Yeah, about right there. Yeah, just in five eighths. It'll work. But I think I'm gonna go with four and a half. Let's see, it's it calls for five and a quarter though. I guess I could stick with five and a quarter. I've got my five eighths naked material. Yeah, also in the catalogs, a lot of times they got something like this. And uh, it shows the neck material size, and a lot of times all you gotta do is put that right in the middle. And yeah, it's definitely bigger than a 3 8 And not by much though. But I think it's 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 about 5 8 is what I think. And uh, it could be 3 8 I don't know. It's gonna work for this smaller size duck. So it's going to be perfect. Uh, I've got a I've got a, a bird flasher, but I've heard a lot of people say with these wood ducks, it's better not to. I guess even use a bird flasher or something on them. I don't know. I think you just got to be real careful. But before I invert the head, I'm going to get what I can off the neck. So. Uh, might be something we don't have to worry about later. That's what I'm getting at. So we just start taking off a little meat I can. And I'll go ahead and go ahead and skin the wings out and the legs and show you how I do that. Yeah, I got a lot of this fat around here and it's got a lot. Um, I'll kind of scrape it sideways motion. Get a lot of this around the neck off with my exacto knife. Going kind of like from a sideways motion. Now I'm just raking a lot of that off. A lot of it's going right to the skin even. Get big chunks of like that off. He's got to be real careful, these wood ducks especially. They're real soft skinned. My bird pleasure machine is set up for ducks, so it's uh, it should be perfect for this. You know, real soft. Too soft to do a turkey with. I thought I could cheat and do a turkey with it, but no, the brush is too soft. So it's specifically made for ducks, there's no doubt about it. So we just keep taking this stuff off. Let's go ahead and skin him out now. Uh, might even reinvert this guy too for a little for a little while. And there we are. He's looking good. Okay, yeah, I see. We got right here. A little borax. I don't have to use too much where you can't see what's going on, but okay. 
is our wing bone. And here we are, we're just separating membrane from the skin. Uh, meat from the skin, just running my knife over that membrane. And uh, you see the skin where the skin and the meat meet. And then you just run your blade over it. Keep working it. I'll do one wing and then you know the other wing does the same thing. We go in. Okay, now we just keep on going down. Keep going down. I help. See, a lot of times I'll push with one finger, pull with another, just work it on down. Working on down. So we're getting to, we're at the joint, and then uh, as you go past that wing joint, you got quills that are connected to the bone. Now, I'm like a big bird, like a turkey or something, we leave the quills connected, and then just go in from the, from underneath the wing and cut the meat out without dissecting the quills and all that. Although I have seen people do turkeys that way. You know, just do a turkey like a duck and Disconnect all the, the quills, the feather quills that are connected to the bone, and just do it like you would a duck. So I've seen them do it the same way on turkeys, you know, while they're fleshing them out. So it's one of those things where it's kind of, I guess you could say it's up to you a little bit. But see how I'm just, you can pull with your finger a little bit and, and just get it to, to disconnect. From the bone, you have to get it in the right way. But I need to work work on down anyway. I'm just separating the skin from the from the wing and working around. So here's the quills right there. You can't hardly see it. There's quills right there. That's what's connected to the. See? Did you hear that? It broke. It snapped off. It snapped off again. See, and then look, wait, another, you can help with a end of your exacto knife too, you can cut through some of those quills. There's another quill right there, you see we broke it off. What it is is they're connected to the wing lightly by a little bit of cartilage. They're connected to the wing bone. The quills are lightly by a little bit of cartilage. You just you can snap them off. You see there, or you can cut them off a little bit. You can just run your blade edge over a little bit. It's usually plenty good enough. So I'm working it down. I'm using fingers. I'm stretching with my pointing finger, my index finger, and break break some of these quills off that that bone down there. This is the bottom bone or where they're connected. The secondary feathers. We just keep on going. Keep going down. Keep going down. Snap a few quills off. Keep going down. Keep going 
this side. Back around to this side. Pulling around toward the front. Around that way. Around on this side. Down, keep going down. Well, you can see what's going on. What it is, I'm getting down to where the uh, those last feathers at that last, I guess you could say the primary feathers. We're getting down to those. here. Hope you can see what's going on. So I'm working my way down. Just working my way around. Going around this side. Being careful using that point to do all my work, separating that skin, getting on down, snap another quill. I'm about almost done snapping quills to get close. down to the end. Yeah, we want to get down as far as we can. So we can see we're getting down pretty far. So we've already snapped all the uh, secondary feathers. There's where they were connected. You can see the little ridges where they were connected. We done broke them all off. Some people do turkeys that way. Got one more right here. There it goes. So now this is a little bit more tedious. What I want to do is just get as far down as I can get. You can use borax to help you in. You can, you'd be surprised how far you can bring it down. Okay, Right here, we can separate a little bit. I can go far, pull back, and I see a little bit of membrane. I just keep going. 
Uh, my goal is to get it as far as I can. I can separate some stuff right there. It's getting down pretty far. And when I pull up, there's still a little bit of membrane that I can use to separate stuff. I'm going to get down as far as humanly possible. And I think I'm about there, to be honest with you. Let's see. Let's see if I can get up under here and get a little closer. And that's pretty darn good anyway. And not only that, if you needed to, if you felt comfortable using some of that bird injection fluid, that'd be a good place to insert some. Like right here on these ends of these wing bones. The hard to get places. Places that won't uh, really kind of flesh out, I guess you could say. And uh, it would definitely work for that. Okay, now that we got that, we we'll do the other wing the same way. So now when you get down to here, you just uh, start getting all that cartilage off. I mean, not cartilage, but meat. And you don't want to take everything out between the joints where the joints don't want to hold together. Um, now you definitely want the bones to stay attached is what I'm getting at. I'll run just kind of in between the bone and the meat. And go up there like that. And go up here and go here. Cut some of this meat off. All this is going to come off anyway. Now you can uh, like use hemostats, grab chunks of meat to help aid you. And you can uh, kind of use it as an aid. Grab chunks of meat off. Sometimes it'll get things you can't get by yourself. Now if you got a wire wheel, we'll get a lot of this off too. And so we just but this joint uh, I'm going to cut below that joint for this one in particular uh, what do you, you do if it's a flying anyway but what I'm saying is yeah it's a, this is going to be a this particular one it's going to be a standing mount Okay, like right here, you got meat all over the, um, you got like two bones together. And all that stuff comes off. And like right here, in between there, here on the outside. And we go right there. And we go here. Okay, we can go here on the other side and go in. Here, a couple little small tendons there holding. It'll come right off. Well, just get all off. Now you see what's in. You know, there's some some stuff in between there too. You know, you can get your knife blade in there. Get that where it'll come out. We go right here. So that way, we got our borax. We're gonna do stuff like that.
Put this back here. You need to pull all this off. Well, maybe not. Well, you got your exacto knife blade, it'll help get a lot of it. You just, yeah, just work on getting it off. It'll come right off. You can see that wire. Whatever you can do to get it off, you can pinch it off. I don't want to come off real good with a little borax. Rub it on there really helps a lot. Hemostats get off a lot. Just use what you can to clean him up real good and get all that stuff off. I'm not even going to be worried about getting the meat off that very end right here, that ball socket. It's going to be cut off anyway. But yeah, even down there on the end, get what you can. Some stuff down here that will come off. A little tenon there and stuff that won't pull off. Well, that's kind of what you got right here. What you got. And you do the other wing the same way. I went down as far as I humanly possibly could. Which is, I got pretty good. I got down pretty deep. About as deep as I could get. And, uh, yeah, you, uh, you do the other wing the same way. Yeah, the legs are real easy. Um, yeah, you just uh, separate the skin from the membrane, work it on down. So I'm kind of holding and pushing down with my thumb and my other last two fingers and then switching around and just using my fingers to do what I got to do. Bring that around. And down as far Way. Get down as far as I can get, and I'm about there. Yeah, in fact, I am. And uh, start cutting the meat off. And a lot of times I'll pull down to get a little extra, just an extra little bit of depth in, heart, in how far down I skint. When you pull that tendon out, it, it helps. You know, you pull down with it and it really helps. So that's, that's kind of what we got going on. We'll do the same on this side. And we just kind of pull down to give you that extra little bit of depth there. 
and get it as far down, make your cut as far down as you can get it. Do the same thing here. Same thing there. Borax to help us out. But yeah, that's it. It's done already. It didn't take long at all. See some tendons sticking out? You might want to sniff them off or whatever. But at the end of this joint's going to get cut off too. So I don't get too particular with getting all that meat off because I don't want to snip them off anyway. There's a little bit of a sleeve kind of sticking out on the side, and well, yeah, it's bone. A lot of times, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get up under it, and it just popped off. It's like a connection of bone that's you can kind of cut it off, and it was right back there, and it uh, came right off. All that stuff came right off there. All that came off. We got a lot of fat here. Wire wheel could be good for getting all that stuff off. We could even uh, we get a lot off the tail already. See all this fat right here. That can come off. around the anus Of that intestine there and let's see here's our tailbone that's probably y'all probably want to see that let me make sure everything's good everything is good now you're here on the tailbone you take that down as far as you can you go on around it so separate a little bit and this is the Quills and stuff starting to expose themselves. There's the, the main tailbone. I had I left a lot on there. But here the quills are on the side, and I'm just uh, getting all that off. Now you got little oil glands. Well, they're coming out. You can see them. A lot of birds, if not most of them, have this. These are little glands where they they oil their feathers. And they'll get their beaks back there and get on that stuff. And then that's what these are. They're like big so they come out. I guess you could say they oil their feathers with that stuff. Here is our tail so far.
much meat's coming off. Just work on getting that off. These are actually the quills are underneath. We're just getting the meat off the top. My wire wheel can get a lot of this off. Can't even see the quills yet. They're under all this meat. Yep, they're under there. Get that other oil gland out real quick. Should already got it out, but I didn't. More that borax and put on there. More this borax on the other side. I'm gonna get that tailbone. It's right in the center. Well, there's a big chunk right there. That should have helped me out as far as... Yeah, there we are. What I've got going on, I've, all the quills, the tail feather quills, are exposing themselves. So I'm just cutting them off. I'm even going to rake my knife up under. There's another set of quills above these quills, and I'll rake my knife up under those just so far. And you can see, see, these are all quills too. And then you've got your main quills right here. I'll get all that stuff off the end of them, all that meat and everything. It's real easy. I'm talking super easy to put. Okay, I'm going between each quill with my exacto knife, trying to help it out. It's really easy to put holes here. In fact, I've done it. I don't think it's too bad yet, but it's not too good either. My goal is to rake my exacto knife over the top of those quills, get off the meat. Borax. Put my borax on there.
be working. Wire brushes help a lot on this stuff for getting all of this junk off. That's your quills. You can still barely see them, but they're in there. Yeah, if we use a wire wheel, it might be on that. They're so easy to put holes in, that's for sure. Okay, now we work on getting the meat off the body, but let me do the head now. Okay. Okay, now we're at the head. We've done the wings. Okay, I'll make a small incision. Well, it's gonna have to be long enough for the head to clear. So I'll get right in the middle and about where the end of the bottom of the beak is, and I'll go up underneath, try to cut up, try to be as straight as possible. Easier said than done, but let me turn them upside down here. Okay. Okay, I'm right in the middle. That's my goal. Straight down the middle. That's pretty good right there. It should be big enough. If not, I may have to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, didn't mean to go that far, but hey, that's good. Now, I just work on inverting that head. Okay, we got stuff on the side here. In other words, he'll kind of skin out a little bit. Some of that throat still. Probably come out. Okay. Better incision and work on peeling that skin around. It won't take much. And it should just come around. Okay, on this side you got a little bit of something going on. He's peeling out a little bit better. See, uh, cut through the ear canal. Yeah, there's an ear canal there. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, you just cut through that ear canal. And... Basically, I guess you could say I made the incision long enough where I could invert him. And I'll show you again here. There's some skin holding. You naturally, when you cut where the skin is trying to hold, but in the process, you'll come to an ear canal. You cut the, there's the hole, that's the ear canal. And just keep going. Look at that. Just practically inverting itself now. You got top of the skull. You just run your knife. Right here, we'll get to the eyes soon. See, so I just kind of just inverted itself pretty much. Okay, now we're to the eyes. Cut that ear canal a little bit better. Okay, there we are. Do that up here a little bit. And. 
here. I, I feel the backbone up in the back of the eye orbit. And so if I'm going to run my razor anywhere, I want it to be the very back where the orbit is. I mean, there's a lot of loose skin there and everything. Um, I want to make sure I don't cut through a, through an eyelid is what I'm getting at. So I'll get right here at the back of the orbit. And if I'm going to make a hole, I'm going to cut back there at the very back. See, there's the eyeball right there. So I'm at the back of the eyeball. There's the eyeball right there. It's a big old, big old eyeball. Now the eyelid is right around. Now I'm looking at the eyelid. The eyelid is right around that uh, pupil. That's what I'm. That's what's word. Pupil is right around where the eyelid is. The eyelid is right around the pupil. So when I'm inverting, keep that in mind. Now let me go ahead and start working on the other one. There's the other side. Back of the eye. Where I know I'm not going to get the pupil. Back of the eye. That's the skin I cut through. It's right there at the back of the eye orbit. And then when I pull forwards, it naturally is going to run me into where the, the pupil is and the eyelids and all that other good stuff. I actually went ahead and cut into the skin that was covering the pupil. Because I know it wasn't the eyelid. Okay, I can see the eyelid, in other words. Just keep freeing it up, work along the head. See that membrane? Run my blade along that membrane, let it free up. on the side go as far out to the end as you can without separating the skin from the beak but you can get out pretty darn far now there's a place here where the eye orbit kind of ends and then starts again right below the eye just be careful you don't uh, screw anything up there but okay, there's the eyelid Yeah, there's a lot of like, I don't know what you call it, little tendons or whatever. Okay. Let me keep going forward. Right up here at the top. Free some of that stuff up. Go forwards on this side. See right here is a place where the eye orbit stops right here and starts again right here. There's an empty spot right here. So I went ahead and went across an empty spot and then I'm on this side. So 
So we keep going forwards. I'm already past the eye. More cartilage here. I mean, more, uh, yeah, when you see that uh, membrane, that white membrane, when you pull the skin a little bit with your fingers, just run your exacto knife edge around it, over the top of it, I mean. Let it do its thing. You can go the other side, do the same thing. I'm kind of not using borax on purpose so you can see it, but it is the top of the beak. You know, eventually this the skin starts. Now they got artificial heads where you actually do uh, go all the way to the end and cut and then just install a fake head and glue it back with super glue. They got those, but if I can use the real real stuff and do a good mount, that's what I'm going to do. Unless it's danger, uh, damaged real bad. Then uh, yeah, that will that would definitely be a cause, I think. I guess some people actually do. Okay, I'm going to keep going forwards here a little bit. I'll take it as far as I can without you know, going too far. A little bit of white membrane there. That stuff can separate. Uh, let's see what we got here. We're separating. We'll just keep going around. A little bit right there. Saw that white membrane. Now a lot of that, even though it peels, it's uh, it's actually already kind of almost far enough. What I'm getting at. Okay, down here. Same thing down here. Yeah, that's as far as that's gonna go. And then same to the other side. What it is is yeah, all this skin, we're going to the end where the beak starts, all the way around. And uh, so that's what we're doing. And all the way around there. A bit more membrane under there I can see. But I'm sure I'm about as far as I can get here too. Okay, now we can go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the, get the head. And I know it's dark. It's going to be hard to kind of see. But, okay, you've got a pupil here. Just like on a bass or anything. I like to get around that eye with a, with a little bit of a exacto knife to kind of free it up a little bit. forceps grab the back of that eye people or where it's connected to the brain or whatever pull it out and then, of course you do the same thing to the other side sometimes I'll expose it or push it forwards on one side oops You're running that where you bust the people and juicy stuff goes everywhere. Whoop, not what I mean.
Okay, yeah, I'd like to get borax in there. Now, wire wool will help with this too. But you got you got meat all over the back of the head, stuff. And you just work on getting all that meat off. You get your hemostats. Okay, right back here. Right here. Right there. A lot of stuff in between there. Try not to destroy anything, but I'll leave what I can, you know, like structure and stuff. Some of the, some stuff in there you probably don't want to take off. There's a lot of meat in there. I try to do as good as I can. A lot of times I leave a lot of borax, excessive amounts in there. Now I don't have a problem with it. Just want to make sure everything gets good, you know. Right in here. Any place where the meat will come up without you destroying, there's like little ends and stuff on the side of the jaw. I try not to even tear those. I try to keep those intact. There's even some meat that'll come off from around the high orbit that's like soft meat. You know where the, I guess the eyeball was at one time. And uh, it'll come off. Hey, there's the bottom of the eye. There's a lot of meat right there that'll come up. And what we're going to do is, is rebuild it up with clay anyway. This is in between the lower jaw and uh, the eyeball. The eye socket area. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can come out right there. So you just keep working on it, getting it out. Yeah, right here, a little bit of meat come off. I try not to destroy all that stuff. Like I said a second ago, but if I can get a little meat off in between those. Some meat that'll come off. Here in the eye socket, a lot will come out. Well, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, so dark and bloody his head is. That's weird. But yeah, you just. You just get, get what you can off. Right here below, uh, there's a little tendon right there. I try not to even tear that, although I have, you know, I don't worry that much about it. But yeah, you get like chunks of meat out real good.
can get it off I will there's a lot of meat right in here that can come off Look at that meat, see if you can get it to come out as good a job as you can. bottom of the beak right there. When you use hemos and cut stuff out, you know, no harm there. And on the inside, you know, you got a lot of a lot of meat and stuff that'll come out. I got me a hacksaw. What I'll do is right at the back of the head, you know, from a side view, I want to cut off right behind where the jaw starts. I'm thinking, you know, enough to get the brains out is what I'm getting at. I'll go straight down. I want it even on both sides. What I'm getting at is a Wire needs to go in, and I guess like a 45 degree angle or something like that, into the back of the skull. Now, you've got all these brains in here that'll, that'll come out. Get like a little wire or something and start help scooping them out into a trash bucket or something. Let's see if that's even in the camera. Yeah, it is. And it'll just, just come right out. You can also get a little borax put down in there. What kind of help we get things kind of the way they need to be? That's looking pretty good. Okay. A little bit even up here in the top of the brain. Like right up here between the eyes, a little bit of brain matter that can come out. That would be easy to overlook. Accidentally leave some in there. The person wouldn't be careful. Okay, that come out. A little bit on that side. A little bit of membrane around the skull. Well, it looks pretty good and done. Don't see anything else in there. That's kind of what I got. That looks pretty good to me. Now, I might want to Oh, 
possibly, uh, you know, when I flash, get clean, uh, get some, get some of that meat around the high lids and stuff. I just want to get some of this blood off. Um, hydrogen peroxide on cotton is real good, but I know this will come right off because it's uh, it wasn't on there before. In other words, it'll it'll clean right off of the water. I just want to make sure everything is good. I know it'll come out in the wash. Um, okay, now. We've got to start getting all the meat off everywhere. Big pieces of meat right here and there. All that stuff. Look right here where the leg was. Look at all that fat and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get them off with my exacto knife. Just, just raking it sideways. It just comes right off. No problem at all. I've actually done some good wood ducks where pretty much did a great job just using an exacto knife and just raking that meat off by going sideways. Well, So what I'm gonna do, uh, I may go ahead and use the wire wheel a little bit. Okay, we got us a wire wheel. We got us a little uh, bird flesher. Uh, some people say it's a little dangerous to use uh, a wire wheel for a wood duck. You know, the ones that they use for ducks. So, well, I'm gonna be careful with it. And probably shouldn't have inverted the head so quick, but. Now, up towards the upper part of the head, it was done really good. I'd done it with my X-Acto knife. But, like right in here, you got like a bunch of fat. And, let's see, like right here. I see a lot of fat here and there. Well, the wheel's going this way, so I want it to go this way. You, you don't want it to go against the quills. You want it to go with the quills and brush over the top of them. And that's the way I like to do it. And, and get that fat off. I mean, it's a pretty soft wheel, so it should be okay. And that's perfect. There's a lot of shadows. Sorry about the shadows. But, like right here, this is a real thin skin area. This is right above the tail. It's hard to see, I know. If you want to get that fat off there. Okay, here's some fat right here. And uh, there again, I want the wheel going that way. I want it to be brushing over the wheels, not against them. And, uh, so it's taking it up. It don't take much. Well, these guys are soft anyway. It's real easy to put a hole in these suckers. I mean, they're, I mean, they're super thin skinned anyway. You can see where it's coming up. Well, let's see. Oh, there's like a whole lot of fat right here. And uh, let's see. Going against the, uh, okay, it should be, yeah, I'm going right. I'm going to hold it like this. Look at all this fat right here. All that will come off.
You see right here where I got a little bit? You want it all to look about like that? Here's some quills coming through, but that's that's good. I mean, the bar wheel is going this way, so it's not going against the quills and doing a lot of damage. That's the way I like to do it. Kind of like going with the grain instead of against the grain, as they say. to bring the quills out right there that's what you want you just want to be a little tedious with it want to get in a hurry and just do your real good job you can see there's like a thick layer of fat right here and let's see yeah you just go with the grain of the feather so it don't lift up under and you just A lot of times I'll do the corners myself with an X-Acto knife or something because yeah, it's real easy to put holes. It's real easy to put holes in this thing. Here's the lower neck. See how it's bringing out the feather, feather quills? That's what you want. And this is one process in the degreasing. Another part of it is soaking it in uh, camp fuel oil, and that'll help. So we got another reason I don't like getting close to the edge is I don't want to damage any feathers. Try to keep from it. I mean, close to the incision. We're bringing out the quills, feather quills. Just keep doing that. You can see them coming out. You just keep doing. You just keep doing that, and uh, bring out the quills. And let's see, there's some fat right here. You just uh, go over the whole bird and uh, make sure those quills are out and get the fat off as good as you can. And then you go to the next step in the greasing process, which is putting them in camp fuel oil and letting them soak for a good while. You can use this along the quills. Kind of straighten things up a little. It's real thin skinned up here though. You gotta be like super, super careful. Got like a lot of thin skin here. A lot of fat though too, so I guess there's a trade off there, you gotta get it both. Whoops. Yeah, if it's too too iffy, I'll get in there with a little exacto knife and just take my time. We should be able to just go right to here with it. Get a spot right there. Okay, now we're going to degrease the bird in another way. We're also going to degrease it because we're going to use degreasing dish soap after we do this. But I've got camp fuel oil, or you know, even Coleman, or I got some cheap generic brand. And I like to uh, 
make sure all that stuff is out. You know, just to make sure he degreases him real good. I even got his head out. I lay him in there. And I make sure I put enough camp fuel in there to cover him real good. And I'm going to let him degrease. I don't know, 30 minutes or so. This does really seem to help. What I'll do is I'll reuse it. I'll get a funnel and put it back in. Reuse it on another bird. And then uh, I might lay a little rock or something on it to make sure it's completely submerged. But I'll let that soak for 30 minutes or so. And then we'll take it out and give it a good degreasing with some wash. Uh, with some dishwashing detergent soap or dishwashing soap and then we'll rinse it off and it'll be ready to dry uh preserve and then dry okay now we'll pull him out let him drain here for a little bit and then we're gonna I like to wash them in dish soap and then rinse them off, throw the borax to him, and now I just rinse him off, well not rinse him off, uh, put him in the, the detergent water solution, may reinvert the head a little bit, I don't know, you want to get all that stuff off the skin, well off the feathers, wash him good, he was kind of clean anyway. I guess people can wash them first, just whatever you work out. These wood ducks are real fragile anyway. I made sure there wasn't any blood on him ahead of time. So that, that helps out. He's, of course, there's some in the head, of course. But, yes, still see some blood coming out of him. But he's clean already. He doesn't have a lot of blood and stuff, so around the eyes is good. Now these guys are soft, they want to tear up real easy. Just be careful how you hold them. Now, I'm gonna rinse him off in the sink and get all the soap off of him. And we'll start uh, putting the preservative on him. Get our borax. I'll try to be a little neat with it. Put it on real good. It has a tendency to want to stick to the feathers if you're not careful. So I just try to be a little neat with it, you know. I'll go all the way up to the edges with it, though. Any little places I missed, go ahead and get it off. A little meat I missed. Of course, that borax is a real good preservative, though. Sometimes I'll even make sure it's real good and wet the borax in and let it kind of penetrate better. But I know it's pretty damp anyway. But I just want to make sure that stuff soaks into that skin. Make sure it soaks in real good like.
that real good. Revert that back out. Get that tail real nice and good. Down in them quills real good. Make sure you get both sides. Invert the head. Get borax on the skin. Make sure you get his skin around his head and his eyes skin out real good. Oops, left a little piece right there. you're getting real good get the head real good get up underneath real good so his eyeballs down in here down in there down in the brain pan we're gonna dampen it up make sure it soaks in there real good you ain't gotta do this I don't know why, but I want to make sure everything is good, damp and hydrated and preserved. And I'm ready to last a lifetime. That's the goal. Probably go ahead and reinvert him again. Make sure that borax don't stick on the feathers too bad. I also want to get the neck real good. A lot of times I'll uh, kind of like lean him over a table or something. You know, I'll get some down here in the neck. Make sure it's all in there real good. All the way around the outskirts. I'm getting it. Sometimes it's hard to invert them. Sometimes you get them a little free to burn or something. You know, it makes it hard. But a lot of times you can you make sure that you know that borax is in there real good from both ends. Sometimes I use like a sharpening steel, something real good and long, just to make sure it's all in there good in case the borax gets stuck in there. Now you can blow dry him, or a lot of times I'll let it sit a little bit, let that borax penetrate a little. I know you don't need to. A lot of times I will. I'll let it uh, let that borax penetrate a little bit. Uh, but I went ahead and got everything. And if you do let him sit a little bit, at least put like a paper towel or something in him, where he's not going to dry on you. Or put him like in a refrigerator or something. And uh, there you go. And you can put that paper towel down real good. And uh, probably wouldn't get on him pretty soon. Um, either mount him right away or like wait a day or something or whatever you got to do. Yeah, all we got to do is blow dry him. 
cucumber would be great. You got one? Some people will use a, a bag with a sawdust in it and stuff. But if you ain't got one, you just do what you gotta do. I don't like it to blow hot. Um, I may blow it warm for like up to like maybe two or three seconds, then uh, push in the heat button where it uh, or where it gets cold. Uh, you have to push in the cool button. No, I'm sorry. Uh, in other words, yeah, you uh, you don't want to let the feathers get too hard, hot because they'll singe. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And some people, you can probably the feathers look a lot better too if it, if you just blow dry it on cool as much as humanly possible. Now if there's like little bits of blood, hydrogen peroxide can get it out later. But I, you know, a lot of the times it just comes right out with a couple of squirts with a squirt ball. And uh, sometimes you just get a little blood on them. What I'll do is I'll blow up under, and um, I might even use a toothbrush to maybe break up some of the downy feathers that might want to stick to the body. But that's later. So blowing from the rear, sometimes it makes it separate quicker and start fluffing up real good. But yeah, that's just kind of what I got going. It'll be a right turn. start around the head even. Sometimes I like to get that done and out of the way. Well, I care for the head. with a toothbrush maybe help you know get some of those feathers started maybe you kind of fluff them up a little bit where the wing where the wing can catch under it so I may do that a little just a hair just to help it out a little and then we'll uh, blow dry the head and the neck and all that other good stuff but yeah even that's probably good enough right there just to get them started on their way start to rise I'll show you when I get it done getting around the belly trying to get up under those feathers so the raise
more you work it, the more the, the feathers start to develop in body and then they puff out and then before you know it, they're completely dry. Now I'm doing a wing and a lot of times I'll blow down from the top, seems to help. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they'll fluff out even from the top, you know, I just, just keep working on it. some of these feathers, break them loose a little bit, if you need to. coming out real glistening and pretty um, just keep working on them and main thing is the singe factor don't worry uh, try not to singe the feathers a lot of times right here on the tail I'll just hold it straight down on the table Still got to be done. Probably this side right here. Side of the belly right here. And the legs. already about done. Well, this is your blow-dried wood duck. And he's going to look good. Here I've got a couple of different bodies. And they're all for wood ducks. This is for a medium. But here's the actual body right here, and this is pretty close. But if it didn't already have a wrap body, I'd go ahead and do it. But I've got several 
videos where I wrap bodies. Basically, you just get your wood wool or your excelsior, as they call it, which is this stuff. It's just wood fibers, that's all it is. And you start with a little strand. It's all about wrapping string and then adding more uh, polyfill. Uh, not polyfill, but adding more excelsior or wood wool. Um, they used to have this stuff where you walk in at Walmart and get it, but now I think you have to order it. I think Walmart will still, still has it, but they don't have it on the shelves. You have to order it. I guess like in bulk or something. So actually it is something you can quote unquote still get at Walmart. But yeah, you just, um, I, I, I do a buffalo head and I do a grouse body. I do a couple of bird bodies. It's, it's on my channel. So yeah, if I didn't already have his body, I'd do it again. It doesn't take that long. But as you can see, it's pretty close. Uh, this one's missing a lot of the tailbone slightly larger but this is that's how you that's how you do it so I got my neck length everything you got is on your body you got your neck length your uh, the width of your neck everything and you actually do better if you just use the bird body you got but I've already got this one so but if you need a little help just check out my video uh, I do a buffalo head and a grouse and I think yeah I think that's the only ones that do that way on there I even carve a body that that's what your options are these bodies the good thing about them they already got like wing pockets this one doesn't per se it just has a little indention but yeah wrap some of the best birds I've ever mounted have been on wrap bodies and even like carved bird bodies when you do a standing one well let me get up here in the video. Like right here with a with a standing uh, standing duck, the weight of the bird will make the sp spots. You know where is a where his leg supposed to anchor up high. If he's flying, it's going to be down low. Yeah, right here. See the difference? Basically, the weight of the bird is mashing down on his thigh and it's bringing it up. So you can see there's there's a standing one, which is about two thirds up from the bottom of his belly, and in here, um, it's about about one third up. So there's a difference, and you know just use your original bird body and you can make your marks. See, as you can see, I've kind of made my marks on this guy already. Check this one out. He uh, looks like he's a uh, probably a standing. It's oh gosh, I don't know. Kind of almost in between. So, uh, but yeah, there's your differences in uh, your bird. Basically, the weight of him brings his thigh up, and uh, I guess that's how you say it. And uh, so that's what you got. Most of your catalogs have charts and stuff if you need them because you never know. Something happens and you need them. You got length of neck and material depending on the bird. And, uh, yeah, length of neck and material depending on the bird. And thickness of your wires that you need for either a standing or a flying. Um, you know, everything you need, they're usually in the catalogs. Somewhere in the catalogs. Yeah, whether you're doing a flying or a standing, you want to cut that joint off the end. And then like here on the legs, I want to, I want to go just below that, below where that ball starts. Break it off. Oops, took a little bit off the side there. It's all right. Usually their legs are good and hollow. And unlike an upland game bird, you know, and I get right below that joint. Sometimes you don't have, you'll, you'll break them less if you snip through the narrowest side first and just pull back. And it keeps a lot of trouble with, uh, you know, bone splintering on you. Either standing or swimming. Well, really, any bird you do, you want to cut that ball joint off. Uh, but I, on standing, sometimes I'll take a little bit more off. Some reason. 
helps you, I guess, center the wings maybe a little bit better or something. Of course, on the head, now this is kind of in general, all ducks, the stuff that I'm telling you here. Um, you want to go in from an angle with a wire. Now, you can either use a Dremel tool and, and get it exact where you want it, or you can get your body and with a neck on it and the wire and just keep twisting and it'll, it'll eventually work its way through the top of the school. Yeah, something else on these bodies, whether it's a wrapped or not, you kind of want to eyeball it and get it where the neck material uh, looks like it's coming flush off the back of the body. You know what I mean? So yeah, about like that. Kind of like an extension of the back, except it's the neck. That's, that's how you kind of want to do it. And I'll kind of eyeball where I think the center is going to be. And then, uh, of course, I get my 14 gauge or whatever gauge wire you got. And then you want to kind of eyeball it where you think it's going to be or should be. And right there is pretty good. And a lot of times I'll go ahead and do the neck hole. I mean, the hole where the neck, supposed to, the neck wire is supposed to go through the top of the head. What it is is the neck wire goes like that. That's about right right there. And then when you push it up, you want it, after it goes through, it's going to run flush with the bottom of kind of like where the jaw and the base of the head meet, because that's where the, about where the spinal cord is right there. So you're going in like at an angle, a frontward angle. I don't know if it'd be 45, somewhere in that range. So a lot of times I'll get my Dremel tool. Yeah, if you use my 14 gauge wire, you could probably get it eventually to go through the top. Yeah, that's what it calls for is 14 gauge wire. But a Dremel tool works nice too. centering. You can center it real good with a Dremel tool. So that's kind of what I got. I went pretty far forward, about as far as I could go, I guess. And uh, then when the wire pushes up, that naked material is going to go right up against here and replicate the, you know, the, the neck and all that stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and put some clay in the, uh, in the eye sockets. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put enough to round everything off, you know, to make it like the eye, if the eyeball was in there, how much space would it be taking? Kind of that deal, I guess you could say. So I'll make sure that clay is everywhere it needs to be. And, You don't want to put too much, of course, but you want to put enough. You want it to conform. Get a little water around him off here, here at the top. Get him here on the side a little bit. I'm pretty much is doing away with any of the yeah if you had a lot of meat and stuff you're just yeah you're just putting everything kind of like back the way it was before you took the eye off and I do several birds on here and every one of them I do this for. So I mean, it's uh, shown more than once, I guess is the right word. So it's gotta be done, so. 
See how it looks up top? It just looks like the maybe the eyeball where the eyeball was, and not any much more than that. And if you got a lot of borax in there, uh, if it bothers you and gets in the way, go ahead and get out like a toothbrush or something. Of course, if you tumble it, you're not going to have a bad problem with a whole lot of borax, probably. Same thing on this side. Just kind of rounding everything out. So I've got a little gap in there that I can probably put a little bit in. And we'll have this head done, except for the bottom, except for the lower jaw. Yeah, it's important that these some of these gaps are filled filled in because if it isn't, then when it dries, that skin will want to. Uh, go down in there. I want to sink down in there, I guess. But now here's what you got for the top, you know, the shape. You kind of round that eye off where the eye is. You do it on both sides. Now for the bottom, make sure you, I kind of shape it until what the bottom of the beak is going to be, and you know, it's, that place will clear it out. It's kind of like a triangle top shape. And it takes place of where the tongue was at and all that stuff. That's what I'm getting at. Well, I mean, all the meat below the tongue, I guess is the right word. There was a lot of meat in there that got taken out. There we are. The throat, all that stuff. Well, okay, now we kind of got it like how we want it, roughly. And then I'll, uh, I'll get in there and stick it down in there and uh, start flattening things out. You know, not wanting to stretch the head out or anything, but I want to make sure it's a good fit, I guess is the right word. That seems to be a good fit. You know, not stretching the head out, kind of holding it to make sure it don't do it, but a lot of this will come off right behind that lower jaw. I take it off. You know, with an exacto knife or a mauling tool or whatever you got on hand. I got my exacto knife and just trimmed it off on the bottom. It's good and flat. Looks good to me. Now, a lot of people mount the bird before they even put their eyes in it. And then they just slip them in the slits and then center them that way, which is probably better. 
but I've gotten in the habit of going ahead and trying to sear them before I put the bird, bird's head on. Well, technically, I mean, you kind of know where the center is anyway with his head off. So I thought it might be easier that way. But a lot of times I figured out it seems like it's a little better to put them a little bit, maybe just slightly off center towards the front a little bit more. Seems like it helps to center. Center centers a lot better that way. So we'll get the eyes and I'll go ahead and pop those babies in. Yeah, I've got a couple of wood duck eyes. And uh, let's see. Really, I'm kind of seeing where the center of the eyeball was. But I may off center just a little bit. Go towards the front a little bit, about like that. Kind of sink it in a little bit. You, know, you don't want it sticking out too far, in other words. You know, something like that. And I think they tend to go forwards and maybe down just a hair. You know, the, I guess the, you could say the eyeball. A lot of this you do when you get when you get the bird mounted, then you can get in there and squeeze and make the eyes look good, you know, like where you think. But I'll center them almost in the middle, but just slightly towards the front. And it just seems to work good for me that way. And of course, you can always move them back or whatever you got to do later, or forwards or whatever you got to do. That's what I got from the side. And now from the front or the top, you still got a shape. And so now we can go ahead and kind of partially revert his head. You know, we still got to put the neck and wire in and sewing and all that good stuff. But you can see how he's kind of coming out already. So he's already kind of looking good. And a lot of this you can do after he's already sewed up, you know. You know, so they come out looking really good. some 14 gauge wire which is the right wire I have ran out before and used different kind of wires it's pretty much just a recommendation to use a certain type of wire but sometimes you get away with other types of wire but we don't have to worry about wing wires so that's that's great we don't even have to worry about wing wires and then but all we gotta do we, we want to cut, uh, cut it long enough to go through the body an anchor and still have a little left to like maybe mount it to something so yeah about like this this is more than good enough right here and then you put an edge on the side that you want to go up through the foot it's just like turkeys and any everything else that we've mounted you know on the on my YouTube channel and yeah oh Put a good angle on it and that's enough to dig to the bottom of the foot you want to cut two wires of course his feet are starting to dry out just a little but i usually find this uh the second where the second knuckle is yeah right there right there that's where i tend to go in and you know what i'll do is i'll what you do, you just use the point and kind of jab into below where that uh, second knuckle is and then go right up the toe and then up the back of the leg. And so that's pretty much what we got going on. So there's the other toe muscle there, or toe knuckle, I guess I should say. Okay, I'm going up it. And you want to be careful. It's easy to, you know, 
you know, go slip through something real quick, make a jerking motion, and actually run a wire through your finger or something like that. I've, I've done it before. I guess it's the process of uh, principle of how like an arrow works. It's uh, yeah, it's easy to make a mistake like that. Really kind of hurt yourself. But I'm going up the back of the leg. I can see what well, is there's an empty spot back there, kind of. Well, it'd be more empty on something like a turkey or something. And but since this is not a turkey, you know, you, but I can still feel the the wire going up the back of the foot. We just keep working it. Look through the back of the knee. I didn't go through yet, but it's and but here's where I'm at right here. So so I, I don't want it to go through there. I don't want it to pop out of the back of his leg. I want it to keep going under the skin and then go up the back of the leg and then it'll come out the back of this bone here. And then we'll tie it off and then go through the body with it. So that's how that's how it works. So a lot of times I will, well, yeah, I'm basically through anyway, but yeah, you'd rather that leg wire, yeah, that's going through. You would rather it go through, uh, you know, you know, the body and all that instead of going through the skin. Let's see what happens. See? Here we are. That's the whole concept of mounting a bird. As long as you got a wire run up against his bones, you can uh, mount him in any pose you want. And uh, if he's a, a standing or swimming, you don't have to worry about putting wire into the wings. Unless he's going to be swimming with his, you know, you know how they can be in the water and still open their wings. But if he's basically, if he's basically swimming or standing, you don't even have to worry about putting a wire in the wing. So that's it. That's even better. Here's kind of what I got. I was a little bit far away, but you can see where I went up the back of the knuckle just by doing a twisting motion. Went up the back of the knuckle, back of the leg for the most part, back of that elbow, stayed under the skin the whole time, come up, right up flush against his bone, and then we'll tie this off. I have used stuff like bread wrappers, you know, that like from top of bread sacks and stuff, and had them hold real good. But you can also like use string or something, you know, if you want something that's, that's how they, that's how they do it. That's how it's recommended to be done. What I'll do, um, when I'm wrapping bird bodies or anything, I'll drop my string down into a bucket when I'm trying to wrap a bird body. But I'll leave it connected to this, and I'll drop it down in a bucket. That way it just tumbles around and doesn't go off from where you want it to be. And you can just give it a couple of good wraps. You know, good tight wraps. Uh, bread wrappers do real good, though. And it's... What less, what less of a hassle. I guess you can go like this too, go on both sides of that wire to get a good, get a good wrap. And just uh, put a good little, good couple of ports on it. You know, make it a little secure. Your way back down towards the bottom. There you go. That ain't going nowhere. It's there. Then you just, uh, Pull it back through. That leg is ready to mount. Oh, like this. This leg, oh, let's see. Yeah, like this. There we are. This leg is ready to go into the body. 
And I'll do this other one the same way. See, now we saw the incision on the beak, or not the beak, but the head. Um, a lot of times I get a squirt bottle on this too. And this makes life easier. And, uh, you know, you can always blow her out back. And a lot of times I'll put stuff up against it to kind of wedge it, whereas it don't fall so much because his head will kind of keep falling. Then you put like stuff up against his head on both sides to keep it from dropping over all the time. So you like to start from the top and work my way down on this. Now I kind of want to go with the grain of the feathers, I guess is the right way to say it. I want to go with the feathers, not against it. But here at the end, I start right here at the end, or close to the end. And you know, it is sewing. And I get right on the right on the end as good as possible and start my incision there. Go all the way down to the end of my where I tied my tied my string off on both sides. And then uh, go on through. It's probably actually better to go up and underneath and then tie that way. But we're going to be going this way anyway. It's going to cover it up. So now we just did the baseball stitch and work this way. You might want to turn your bird sideways or turn them around with the tail first. Whichever is easier to you. You may go this way with it. Now this wire right here may get in your way too. That tends to happen a lot with me. But get those little pin feathers and you want to try not to get those in if you can keep from it. You get close to the end as you can. This seems to help to do that. Get close to the end as you can. And then what we got here? The only bad thing about this button thread is it really tries to wiggle around on you. But we go here. Okay, then you pull it up. And then you do it again. I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch or something. We'll do a good job. Yeah, go there. Cinch it up. Go to the other side. or so or something like that. Get right on the end. Do as good as possible of course. Go on through. Make sure your string is good and separated. Like so forth. Pull it up. 
and keep going right here on the end right there you just want to get a good bit of skin try not to pick up many pin feathers and uh, pretty much the name of the game right there Push it up a little. Don't have to get super hard with it. And just keep doing that until you go to the end and tie it off. And then we'll blow dry it. Yeah, don't know if he can see it too well, but there's some slight blood stains on it. They, they're, they're not too, they don't show too much. I'm, I guess where I've sprayed a lot of water on it, but there's a little bit, and I'm going to get some hydrogen peroxide on a Q-tip and just kind of clean the blood off. Take out a little hydrogen peroxide. I'll just get some on a Q-tip and just kind of clean the blood off. It'll, once you kind of come off anyway, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just from where we done the head and everything. Uh, yeah, you tend to get a little, and plus it's, it's solid white right here. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, let it sit for a second on those feathers and everything, you know. But yeah, it really seems to work as far as getting that stuff out. You see here it's a lot of dirt and stuff and pretty much blood. But you keep doing that and eventually all that stuff's gonna come up. I mean, it's coming on off on the Q-tip and everything, so, you know, if it's something like a hood merganser or, well, some of those birds, you don't have to do the incision, you know, so, but, like if it was a dark colored bird, it wouldn't show near as much, it wouldn't be much of an issue. You just keep... Working that and get it until you get it as clean as you think it can be. It's looking pretty good. Still getting, you know, stuff off. Just keep doing it until you think you've done uh, good enough. It's good for getting rid of blood. That's that's its number one thing right there. And I think that's good enough right there. I would just blow dry. I might want to get some of those feathers started by here again. I got my toothbrush. Just kind of get them where I know that the hairs are going to catch under. And it's going to fluff them out real good. I get my blow dryer. Start fluffing them back up. Keep doing that until he's all fluffed out. All those little pin feathers are fluffed out. Well, not a bad job, as you can see. Just gotta make sure that neck is all the way down on there. Yes, like that. But yeah, you can tell he looks no blood nowhere on that white. He looks pretty good.
Yeah, these little masks can take kind of smoothen the neck out a little bit. But where I connected it together is a little bit, a little bit lopsided, and had a few bad spots in it. So I just put a little bit of masking tape over it. That'll be fine. Just smoothing the neck material out. You know, since I pieced two pieces together. Oh yeah, right here on, on your on the wings. Already skimmed these suckers out all the way down to the end. Got a lot of borax in it still. It's not a bad thing. Well, right here where this joint is, since it's going to be flying, you know, if it was standing, wouldn't even have to worry about doing any of this. Since it's going to be flying, I will cut through a little bit of that joint. Basically, so it is, so it'll, it'll, go, it'll go straight like this. You know, that's what I'm after right there. A lot of times you got to cut just a little bit of cartilage, you know, to get it to do that. But that way I can make him sore. And, I, and plus, when you push your wire through, you don't have to worry about trying to push it through an elbow. You know, it's much easier to push a wire if you if you can keep your wire straight. It's much easier to push it. You can always bend it if you have to later. So that's that's what we got going on right here, right here, just like that. And here's something else I got to do. He's going to be fine, but still, I'll cut this ball off the end. Now, if I, if I was doing a standing, I'd cut it down here somewhere a lot of times, you know. I'll cut a lot of that wing bone off. But, since it's not going to be standing, I'm going to cut it right at the top. Now, these, these wings are hollow. There's a little bit of blood or something in there, but they're basically hollow. And then I do the same thing to this wing, too. Just find that little where they connect by cartilage or whatever. I want to make sure that wing goes straight. Straight enough. Throw a little borax down here in that cartilage. Then here again I get my little uh snapper and make sure you get right here on the end. Right here on the end. There you go. Now you got your now I can run my wires for my flying bird. This case is going to be soaring. Just like my soaring turkey I done. Same thing except it's a duck, not a turkey. As far as the legs, I already did the same thing. I cut the ball off the end of them. Basically, you just snap them off. Same with the wings, you know. No difference. Just kind of snap them off. And, you know, close to the end is the end. And there you go. Now, you want to guesstimate a little bit as far as the length of your wing wire. You want, you want to go the length of the wing and through the body, you know, anchor anchor it through the body. So, I always cut more than I'll ever need. So I just get something with a little cutter on it, like a little pair of screwdrivers or a little pair of pliers or something. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure this is, well, it calls for 14 gauge for the legs and then 18 gauge for the wings. I think this is, I think this is maybe, this could be 18 or 16 gauge, it may not be 14 gauge, but it's thin enough, good enough for the legs since it's fine, you know. Um, 
अब अंग्रेज आई थी तो बी सिक्स नंबर आई थिंक इट्स आई But it's what calls for the wings, and I think the neck is also 14. The legs are 14. The neck is 14. I'm like a standing duck. The legs and the wings are、uh, legs, and the neck is a 14. But on a flying duck, it's like 18. But 16 will work. I mean, it's plenty thin enough, and it's good enough for the legs too. So we're just going to go with.、Uh, We're gonna go with sixteen and call it good. Hate to have to wait on an order. Sometimes Lowe's carries some of this stuff. You know,、uh, some of the hardware stores do. But a lot of times they don't always have what you need. Here again, make sure it's long enough. You know, to do what you got to do. Go through the wings and anchor it to the body. And just. Put you off, please. Of course, we also need some stuff for the legs,、um, but we'll do the we'll do the wings first. Make sure it's getting flat. A lot of times, we get a hammer, we get a flat spot, kind of hammer out some of the impurities, some of the deep bends. Because unfortunately, a lot of the times when we get the wire, it's it's in rolls. So you have to straighten it up yourself. But you want to put a sharp end on it. So it'll kind of root through the wing. But you don't have to go far because we skin it out all the way to the end anyway. We do the same thing this other side at the very end. And.、Uh, Cut you again off of it. Now we start running it through, running it through our wings. Just like I do a, that's just like I do a turkey. I'm all the way to the end here, right here to the primaries where the primaries are at. I can't skin it out any farther. It's as far as it's been skinned. Right here. So get my get my wire. Actually, probably ought to go ahead and reinvert it. There we are. Yeah, I'll screw. I'll, I'll wire him up first before I even put the body in. Okay. I reinverted the wing, and you can feel where it's going. I can feel it's going past. Okay, there we are. Now I'm coming up to where we got done skinning him out right in here. I can feel. Look, I don't want to. I want to go through there. Yeah, right in here is. That's as far as we skin, right there. Through the top here, we're going right through here. I can feel it. I want to come out underneath. I don't want to come out on the other side, which I, occasionally I'll do. I'll come out on the back side of the wing accidentally, and I don't really want to do that. Okay. Well, here's where I come out, but that's good. What we'll do is. When we mount him, we'll connect him to that wire. Make him make an excellent pose. So 
So you want to come out as far on the end, you know, as on the end as you can. And then call it good enough. That's the way I do it. And when I come down on the end, I like to leave just enough wire where I can go into the body and, and still wrap the string or whatever. If I was doing a turkey, I wouldn't want a lot of string out because I keep catching on it. You know, when I'm trying to rack a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of muscle there. But with, with the duck, we don't even have to worry about any of that. And I have been able to like use bird wrappers and stuff, you know, just to sit you down real good. And then, and then you can use string or whatever too if you want to. But yeah, what it does is uh, you want to secure it where it don't move around. You don't, you want, you kind of want that wire where it's going to stay. You know, like little old bread wrappers. It just, I can cinch it down real good where it's tight, and yet it can still, the wire will still be able to slip through it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you don't want to torque it down so tight you can't, uh, push your wire through your wing. I've, uh, I've been there and done that. But you can, with these, there's a little wire in these little bread wrappers, you can, you can tighten it down when it ain't going to move. And you can always snip off the excess. And you can also wrap string around it if you desire to. You can always do that too. You kind of get the idea of what's going on. I push the skin, come out about right here. That's about, I guess, as far as I could have come out. And then when we mount him, we'll tie off this first primary. Kind of spread those wings out where he's a good sword pose, and then we'll card him and all that stuff. So that's what we got going on. Now. So I'll just put more, a couple more of these on there. this off or tuck it up in between the wing the two wing bones nobody'll ever know it. I'm gonna put another one up right here. Right up here at the very base. My goal is to Secure it to the bone where it's not going to move around much when I'm pushing my wing bone through. But, you, know, you can just use string too, and it's plenty good enough. Okay. Twist one time here. And go around. A couple of torques. This was a little bit longer bread wire. But you get the point. If you want, you can wrap a little extra string around it for a little extra support. Let's see what we got here. I'm 
Now, I usually drop my string down in a, a bucket so it don't go anywhere. That's how I usually do that. And then just start wrapping whatever you got to wrap. If you wrap your own bird body, which I've done a lot. I think I've got a, I've done, I think I've done a grouse with a wrap body on here. Um, I've done a uh, buffalo head. There you go. Get a little excess off if you got it. There you go. Perfectly done wing. Straighten everything out. It's going to be soaring. If there's a final approach, especially, you know, where you're going to look at the inside of the wings, you probably don't want anything kind of buckling up or anything. You probably want to use strain on that. But they do the other wing the same way. Primary start here. This is as far as you can really get down. So I get my wing wire, and I want to go just on the inside of that. So you got your two wings, and you got where your primary start. I went down as far as I could. So I know I'm. I know I'm right here. Right there, almost about where my primary start. But I, if I can go through there, I will. That's my goal. I would rather go through there. Well, that'll work. It came out right on top. Okay, we can live with that. I want to come out on the back of the wing. That's I, I'd rather not do that. That's for sure. Okay. Slide it all the way till you got to the back of your wing bones. Then you got to pull it back in a little. Okay. That's perfect. Sinking down with that wire don't move. That's my object. String is probably your best bet, but you got to worry about uh, things wanting to kind of scoot around on you while you're mounting it. Kind of. But my goal is when I wrap this spread wire, we're trying to do it in a way. Where I'm going to cinch that wire down. Like in this case, I went to the wing, I went around the wing, and I'm just going to. I went around the bone. Then I went up under, looped around the wing wire. If you need to. We get that down in between those wing bones. That's basically all you're doing. You're just uh, you're drawing everything up. Of this wing going. I'll do the same thing with that. Excess. It's pretty tight.
here and live out the end. This is what you have now. Now you can use string. I've done it. It's just you have to, I don't know, you have to fork. The string grabs the wire a lot. I mean, it really does. But it's no big either way. Not really. So then you get your little string wrap around there. that bird bone you don't go nowhere. Go. Here's our other one. Pull it through. There you are. You want to do the legs? Do it the same way. You same with the legs, two extra parts. It ain't going to be a lot, and you don't need much. See the second knuckle, uh, the last one before you get to the toenail, and I'll go right up under it, and I'll get up in there. A lot of times I'll cup it because it helps. So I'm riding right up under the toe. I'm going up the toe actually, the bottom of the toe. And this. Make sure you stay in. Whatever you gotta do to stay in. Come up to the back of the foot. Okay. You got a toe here. And my goal is to go up to the back of the leg here. And up into here, all up under the skin. And then we'll go this way and wrap our uh Our string or whatever to this bone, but the wire is going to go up underneath and come up right beside it. So that's our that's our go. Okay, I, I went up one side of the toe. That's good. You probably pretty much have to. So I'm right here. And I'm still Okay, uh, looks like I need a body. This is the real body. Okay, it looks like about six inches by by about three inches. Okay, so I need a body. Well, we'll go about six inches by three and a half or something like that.
to you for what, about six inches. Put a mark about right there. It's just some carbon foam that you use for fish. Nothing saying you can't curve. Nothing saying you can't carve a, a bird body. And we'll go down about three and a half. About three and a quarter. There we are. We'll just kind of go out straight from there. There we are. Probably want to carve a little extra, but not enough. So you want to have a little extra room, but not enough. Honestly, don't see why a person couldn't do this like they would a uh, like a fish body or something. It'd probably help them out a little bit, you know, somewhat. Just kind of can't hurt. It'll kind of help out a little bit. Get the general body design. And you also want to get your neck measurement too. For future reference, uh, we've got a neck of, looks like, Partially frozen neck, but that's for a reason. Oh wow, looks like four and a half exact. Four and a half, that'll work. Now I got it kind of marked, and I can just kind of save me on doing a bunch of shaving. All this can come off, of course. teeth would be a little better. Keep the thing, you know, the phone wants to crack, and it's going to crack off a little more than what you want it to. The teeth, you don't have to worry about that because it just shades on through like a saw instead of trying to crack or whatever. So you get a little, a little bit of lead mark right here. Got a piece of teeth on it. You know, hacksaw blade work too. So you can tell the difference between something that's got a little, got some teeth. You got more control over how much of a, a bite it takes off. Just a little bit right here. I've got a quail body I've done on video this way. These parts of an old deer form. But we happen to have clay here, so 
or a extra phone anyway, so we don't have to rely on any of stuff. Okay, we got this. We got the shape of it from the top or the bottom, however you want to do it. What about the side? Yeah, like this. Yeah, we can use a pencil for that too. Just kind of get a rough idea. It'll save us on having to eyeball everything and whittling it down and all that stuff. Just kind of like, we just kind of want to make sure that we don't go, we want to stay, we make sure the line doesn't go up under it. We want to make sure it's straight down so we get an accurate measurement that way. So I have to do some whittling, but it won't be near as much now, see? So we kind of got an idea how everything goes. Still way too fat, so I'm still trimming him up. Oh, just a little. Start uh, being a little bit better with the measurements. So now we're just going to start carving and shaving. Okay, we've got a bird body right here. I'm going to work on the on the diameter time. So a little foam last here to get this hardware store. You just keep matching it up to get it like how you want it. Thank you. 
Okay, this is definitely the top. And we got this is the bottom. something a little bit already made here. And the rounder part is the body, bottom. So we, we already got our length. The neck length is four and a half. And it's a five eighths necking material. So now we just eyeball it. Definitely a big difference. So I've got to do some flattening out on the bottom for sure. This little sanding block is one of the best things I ever got. It controls how much you take off at one time. As you can tell, I gotta take off quite a bit. So I use this one again. It won't take long. They're getting there. Ever so slowly. periodically and keep shaving it off. the back here. Oh, we're getting ever so close. Still a lot of difference, you can tell. A lot of difference. So, uh, still got to take more off. Not much more, though. Kind of round him off, take rough edges off. Even the tail out. If I take a little off the tail, if I take too much off, you can build it up with a little 
little wire, put a little wire in, bend to use, stick it down in there. I've done that a lot anyway. Yeah, there's a little of a break off point right down here. And that's pretty good. Actually up to about here. Okay, about right there. Okay. In other words, I can take a lot off right here. This is where the legs are going to be anyway. A lot of times it's thicker there. And I'll purposely try to not worry so much about thickness where I know the legs are. If that makes any sense. And this is going to be a flying pose. And I'm not going to have them up against the body. They're going to be a little bit splayed out. It's a soaring pose. And you're going to be able to see it a little bit. So that's kind of what we got going on there. Just taking rough corners off, so I won't be able to see rough corners anywhere. It looks pretty good and round. That's a good match. But now, there's also, I'm just going to eyeball it, but there's a little indention area up here. I can see where the wings are supposed to attach. And then there's the belly area. And here's the leg area. Okay. And the same thing on the other side. Well, it, it's narrow right here. Right above the belly, there's like a pocket. A little narrow pocket where the wings, when they're folded up, where they go. And, uh, so pretty much I want to kind of do something with that. There's a leg right there. Okay. Now you can match symmetry up too. You, you can put a leg dot on one side of one spot and then match it up with the same place on the other side. Make sure you're good kneading, and I am. There we are. Okay, there's a little pocket right here. Just a little narrow place. On a standing duck, you know, you're doing a standing duck, I would want a good narrow spot right here. You know, even your bird boys, when you get them, there's a little bit of a narrow spot right here where the back is. So I'm just incorporating that in there. Not getting too carried away. You know, but I want, a, I want a little bit of a pocket area on both sides. But you don't even have to go this extreme. You can could, you could mount the bird right now the way it is, just like this. Have a real good looking bird. Because he's soaring, the only thing that's really... You're going to have the wings soaring. And then the legs are going to be underneath and the tail is going to be spread out. And if you saw my turkey mount video, it's the same thing. Um, I used a bird body, but at the same time, it was a bird body that, uh, so right here down the back, right there where the leg attaches, I'm going to put the groove on this other side, make sure everything lines up real good. If I, was, if, was, if I was doing a standing bird, this would be more important because the wings kind of fold up and sit there. But technically, it's already good enough, believe it or not. You don't have to be quite as correct. Uh, just, just saying it like I see it. You don't have to be as quite as correct on like a flying bird. If he's torn and all you got is the wings spread out and you're seeing the pretty feathers on the back and the tail, you don't have to be worrying about being extremely accurate with 
you know, totally everything. Because basically you want the wings, you know, the you want where the wings go in the body, you definitely want accurate, of course. See there he is. See there's that little narrow spot right above the belly. It's right here. The belly is the right width. You can tell by looking. And then your wing attachment, your leg attachments are All right, here. That was a little bit too far up. Okay, about right here. Okay, leg attachments are here. Let's see. You just eyeball it. That is. That's pretty good. That's good right there. There's one there. And then the other one would be here. There we are, right there. There you are, there's your leg attachments. And your wing attachments are up here. The neck attachment is always the middle. And you want it, you want the neck to be like, the, the, well, what it is, it's an extension of the spinal cord. It comes right off the back of the bird. So that's pretty much how you want it. You want it to look like it's an extension of the spinal cord coming off. And that's what it is. Okay. So we got that. Let's see the wings where they attach. Huh. A little froze. That's all right. I should be able to find the wing where it attaches, right? Looks like right there. Okay, the wing attaches. Okay, right, right in there. That's perfect right there, yeah. The wing attaches here, then you just eyeball it with the other side. Make sure it attaches in the same area. And it does. Kind of like towards the front of the pocket. That's kind of a little bit far back from where the body starts. And there you have it. I'm just going to even it up on both sides. You know, you know. I see stuff on one side a certain way. I don't even need that body now. I can toss it. Manicuring is all I'm doing right now. A little bit of manicure work. You know, I want symmetry involved. But most of your symmetry is just going to be on the wings, the way to spread out, and the legs that are going to be up underneath. And on a flying pose, it's not near as dramatic as if, you know, it's like a standing pose. Especially on a thorn pose where they're going to be underneath. You're not going to get a good glimpse of the, of the legs anyway. So that's kind of what you got going on. So here's our bird body, our wing attachments, our neck attachment, and back leg attachments. That one's getting where I can't hardly see it. There we are. There we are. Nice looking bird body. There's the real one. Here's the fake one. I don't see a bit of difference. 
The length is the same. And all I gotta do is put a 5 8 neck in it, four and a four and a half. Four and a half inches long. Now the booklet calls for he wants the legs to be 14 gauge, the neck to be 14 gauge, and also the wings to be 16 gauge. I believe that's correct. Who wants the wings to be 18 gauge? Which I do have some 18 gauge, but I'm gonna, I'll be totally fine with, well, I'll tell you what, I'll use 18 gauge on the wings since it calls for it. But as far as the leg, since it's a flying burn in the neck, that's going to have to be a 16 gauge. Uh, basically, I don't have no 14 gauge. That's all right. It's a flying duck. And we're not going to need, you know, I've got 18 gauge and 16 gauge. And I've got 12 and 10. That's it. That's all right. Make sure you got a little angle on your... I want the neck to look like look like exactly what it is, the spinal cord coming off the back. That's, that's what it is. So I know the, I know the neck's gonna be about five eighths. So I figure about right here. I'll bend it down, of course. I'm gonna center it as good as I can between my two wing marks. Center it. And I'm coming right off the back. I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight down and get a real good anchor. Why not, right? This foam is a little bit on the soft side. Hey, that's all right. With a flying bird, it looks great. There you go. Point on the end of the bird's neck. This is so the foam can go through. I'm going to end up cutting some more off. Now the neck was 14 and a half. Unfortunately, I got two pieces that's going to have to add, that will definitely add up over four and a half. So we've got, okay, we've got this one. I think I'd rather have a broke piece towards the bottom. And yeah, not necessarily, it doesn't matter. Okay, you're going to center it. You're going to center it real good. Try to come up to the middle as much as possible. It's close, but yeah, that's pretty good. Go with that. Go all the way down with it. We can bend the wire accordingly to still strap the neck up. The material is cut at an angle, but that's all the much better. It's going to look more realistic that way. Okay, we know we need four and a half. That's the length of the bird neck from the front of the body, not the back. From the front, okay? So go ahead and get this piece on there too. Center it real good. Right along the, put some even right in here. 
a lot of times I'll put some right here, you know, so this part of the neck can hold two, and right up to the body, and just cinch it down, bam. Make sure there's some right here, all along the neck, bam. It's not coming off. Okay, four and a half. That would be right here. Your neck. You might want to, although it's the same length, you might want to whittle off some impurities where it don't match up or something. You know, you can do that. Water can be bent to make it, to make it fit. Perfect. There you are. Now when we install the wings and the legs, we've got our dots. There's a dot right here. There's a dot right there. You see the dots. This this uh, foam was so soft, I might not worry about pre-growing holes. If it was hard foam like they use on your turkey bodies and these modern bird bodies, maybe so. But you can tell this is perfectly, perfect rendition. It's going to make for a nice... Nice wood duck. That's about correct. The neck is usually about two thirds as long as the body. So the neck is four and a half. The body is six inches. That's perfect. That's the way I do all my birds. You know, we got to run wires to the legs. That's what you got to do. Yeah, this is probably, this probably is 14 gauge, 16 or anything. Okay, now I'm up to the back of the elbow. Now here's what I do on turkeys or anything. To make sure that I get the bend right, I'll put it up against the table and bend it where I know that it's not going to want to go out. You know, I've been, I've been in the leg in the opposite direction in other words. That's what I'm getting at. Oops. In other words, it should be coming out from the bottom of this. No? Okay. Yeah, there we are. See? Now the wire comes through, about right there. Now if you look, see the wire did not come out anywhere. It went up underneath through the elbow, up through the leg, leg joints, and then the toenails, and that's far enough. Now it's got to go in the body. That'll work. Okay. 
And then you can just tile off the string if you want to. You don't have to use wires. You just grab string, cinch it up real good, and it's not going to move. You don't want to pull it down so tight you can't move your wire. That's, that's the problems I've had. You just make sure you got some good string down there, real torque, real good. There's your leg wire going to your body. We do the other one the same way. For ease, for ease of passage, you might want to put a little point on the end of these wires. Of course, if you use this foam, you, know, you ain't got to worry about that. The carbon foam is so soft. But if you're using like a regular, you know, kind of hard, hard body, you got to put an edge on that sucker. And now what we have to do is I'm going to run my wire down my neck, neck of material up to the neck. Now I've already pre-drilled a hole at a 45 degree angle on my Dremel tool. I think I, I might have showed that. I might have, not not have. You just go like a 45 degree angle from the, from the back of the jaw and after you saw the back of the skull off to get the brains out and then you just go from there and work your neck up through and now this bird already sewed him up and everything put his eyes in the whole nine yards Still, I know that I just stretch him down to make sure that neck is in there good. I know that in the back of the back of the head, there it is. Now the eyes are already in place, so all I got to do is and went through the top right there, very top of the head. I just want to make sure everything goes smooth and flush. If you know what I mean. Now we know that, that'll work. Okay, we find our wing wires. And we, uh, probably wouldn't hurt to pull a little bit of this out. It'll give us a little bit more room. That's coming. It's fine. It's what you want. And then you just, when I go in, I don't want to come out like on the back because that'll be a pain in the butt to try to, you know, anchor and everything. So I'll go at a slightly upward angle if possible. Pull my wire and go back on on my wing a little bit. Now push through some more. That's where I come out. Come out kind of at the top, which is okay with me. for a good anchor. Now we've got a good anchor right here. And then we pull it a little bit more.
make sure your anchor is good and straight. If it's smaller wire, you know, the wires can bend a little bit easier. Get okay, that straight. Okay, there's... Then you do the opposite. You want to push the wing up against the... up against the body as you put your anchor in. Carbon foam is so soft, probably better off not even doing that, to be honest with you. Just, uh, I'm just going to cinch it back up. And it's in. And then I'll even kind of do that, kind of, it works out of the way. Same thing to the other side. On my wing wire. Let me grab hold of the end to kind of pull it out a little bit. Need much for a good anchor, but okay. that's enough for a good anchor. And I just pull a little bit more. So I'm really an anchor here. You get a good bite and go into the body real good. There's perfect. Now you got to make sure you, the wing stays up against the body. So you just uh, so separate it a little bit. When you push in with an anchor, it's going to pull it back out. But you just keep, you know, uh, cinching it back up. It goes out. Cinch it, cinch it back up. We can do all birds, if it's a turkey or anything. We go back out. And uh, just make sure it's up against the body real good. And then, I even bend the wings a little bit to kind of help anchor it a little bit. It seems like it helps a little bit. Yeah, he's coming along nicely. Now, that's a good fit. I amazed myself. Did a pretty good job. black dots that you made with your uh, sharpie pen. You know, you use your bird reference from your real bird. Slide your leg down. You know, we easy. There we are. Make sure you get a good bite, just like you did on the wings. Do the same thing. Slide the wing wire down. You may 
make sure your legs are not twisted. Sometimes all those feathers can be a little tricky and you can, you know, accidentally. It should come out here and put them on. It should. Feathers are out of the way. Here we are. That's where we come through. Just like you do if it was a, you know, a bigger bird or something. Pull your legs right out there. Then you do the opposite. Sometimes I'll bend the legs too to make sure that everything is kosher. Yeah, the tail needs to go. See, we didn't go all the way to the anus. What I'm, what I'm getting at, there's a there'll be a piece of skin that kind of wants to ride on the bottom. It's going to hold the tail, keep the tail from coming down. You can even pin it if you wanted to. Same thing to this leg. Excess. Find where you got to go in your body. Oh, now a little bit too much. Change that back in. It's a good fit, in other words. You don't have a lot of slack with this one. Black hole. Is there a black hole right here? You know that's where the leg needs to go. Make sure the wire our leg's not twisted. I think that's it. And you just. Thank you. 
work your way in. To get leverage, you may have to turn your bird a little bit. Clean that room for an anchor. Ooh. More than I ever need. Okay. So you get a strategic part where you know you're going to get a good bite of plenty of bird body. Sell this bad boy. Yeah, if I can, I'll cut off some excess wire. I'm not going to need these leg wires anymore. I'll cut off, I'll leave a little bit sticking out the end. Definitely will leave some of the wing wire, it's not in the way anyway. Make sure everything's good and tight. Sew him up. Got my button thread again, just like I did on the neck, on the head. Make sure you cut off enough. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. You can always just tie off and start again. You know, if your thread is unmanageable, you've got so big bird. I've done that before. Just. So what you got can tie it off. You can start over again with another, another piece. I've done that before. I just, I just go through the eye, tall thing with a couple of good knots and start sewing. Just put a couple of knots in the end of it. This. Start sewing. I usually start from the top and work my way down. Right up here on the breast here. Now these birds are kind of tender. I mean in the washing process, a lot of times where I'll rip them a little bit, but I didn't do it this time, which is good. You just gotta when I rip them, it's usually towards the top of the incision right here. I want them washing and stuff. But that's just it's just me. So I go probably oh gosh. 
probably less than a quarter of an inch apart, whatever that is. Try to make sure no threads are in the way, or feathers are in the way. Yeah, every little bit helps as far as covering your seam. Just try to make sure it's even. If it starts to look like your one side's coming down farther than the other, uh, just try to work to correct that. Probably can't see that, but you get the idea. It's just so make sure no feathers are in the way. The next one will be about right, a little about right here. Well, actually, about right here. Here we are. I get as close to the end as I can where I know it's not going to tear apart or anything. And a lot of times when you tie it off, you know. You can, you can make that go underneath the skin and make sure your thread is over it. You know, like where you tied your knot and all that to start sewing. You can uh, actually get that where it's underneath what you're sewing. This is what I did on the head. You know, I made the knot tied off on the top, but it's underneath the skin, so you can't see it. You know, I just make sure your thread goes over it. So it'll sit the skin up and it'll go over it. I think you know what I mean. Let's see. Okay. Cinch it up. Okay. Maybe a quarter inch apart or less. Make sure no feathers are in the way. Sometimes on my flying birds, I'll pack a little extra if it'll take it. But this is a good looking bird anyway, it'll be fine. You know, if it's a loose fit, a lot of times you can build a lot of extra padding in the breast. And, you know, I've taken advantage of that before and done that. Where it's not such a loose fit, you know. This is a pretty good fit, this bird is. Well, we go all the way down. If you run out of thread, tie off what you got and start over again. And I'm going to sew all the way down to the to the, almost to the anus. That's where I quit. Just sew your incision up. So yeah, it started getting hard finding the, finding the, where my next hole's supposed to be, you know, when I'm sewing. So I kind of whip these feathers a little bit, the downy feathers. So it'll kind of stay out of my way a little bit while I'm sewing. And that should help. Just sewing, cinching everything up. But now it's a, it's a little easier since I use a little bit of a little bit of water on the seam. I'll just have to blow dry when I'm done. And oh, it makes life so much easier. It really does. Yeah, the feathers were just kept fluffing over. I couldn't see it. And I use a little bit of water, and oh, it's made my life so much easier. So much easier. I just do a couple stitches, cinch it up, make sure it's been, you know, good together. Stitches. Stitch well. Okay. 
and uh, tied it off. Now you probably want to go ahead and uh, blow your seam dry again. a little bit of, I don't know, it's rust or whatever right here. You can see it. I tried using hydrogen peroxide. It seemed like it helped maybe a little bit, but they've actually got stuff. Well, the good thing this is that his belly's going to be up against the wall anyway. But he might want to try hydrogen peroxide maybe a little bit. Seems like it helped a little bit. I'm not going to leave it on there. Let it fizz for a second. See if it helps get some of that rust off. They've got stuff I think that's supposed to help with that. But it just kind of depends on where they go. I, I guess you call it rust. You know, it's something like that. A lot of birds get it. Depends on where you get them, you know. Or where they've been. And it gets on their feathers. Yeah, I tried wiping it off and everything, it don't want to come off. Yeah, I've got to mount this guy on like a temporary base. Um, I'm going to use this old plaque, I've used it several times. But it comes in handy for mounting stuff temporarily. And I've used it for my preserving my deer and velvet antlers, you know, so I could have something to, you know, preserve them with, and, you know, have them on something. And they used it on a quail. I believe it's outline of a state, maybe Georgia or something. But yeah, I've, these plaques come in handy sometimes just for, you know, temporary bases, basically. I've got some king gauge wire here. And I want to make sure it's long enough to go from the back of the plaque and anchor the bird also. So I'm thinking we're gonna have too much, too much and not enough. And of course, you want to put a toy on it. Just kind of put it at an angle. Yeah, this is 10 gauge. It should be plenty good enough. Good enough for the point. And what we do here is just find one of these mini holes that I've drilled. This is just temporary, nothing special. You just put it up like this and see how it is in the back. Then I shoot some staples. And the staple gun. aren't even long enough to go all the way through. Now we've got something that I can anchor my and I want this point to kind of go up go up under the wing and actually a little bit lower about like this. And then what it'll do it should come up you kind of want to watch it a little bit. Um, you want it to uh, 
Okay, I want it to go here. It don't really matter because you can bend it anyway. But if you go in higher on this side, you should be able to come out a little bit lower on this side. So that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Or, you know, I mean lower on this side and a little bit higher up under the wing on this side to kind of camouflage it a little bit. That's kind of what we're looking at. So, yeah, about right here. And you just push and keep pushing. It should come out where you kind of want it to, hopefully. And it did. This wing will camouflage it if it shows at all anyway, which it probably wouldn't. You can see where it's coming through right, right here. And what I want to do, probably bend it. I could go forwards with the bend, but I think I'll go backwards with the bend because of where it come out at. This is just temporary too. But if it wasn't, would be the same thing. But I'll pull it up so you can see. You kind of get the idea. You just just make an anchor, like we did the wings and everything else. Now you come back down. And I definitely want to kind of go back in blow all these pretty feathers if I can. Yeah, about right there. So I kind of go on in. You don't want the anchor to be wider than the body. You don't want it to poke out the other side. Which could easily be done. But there we go kind of show you by lifting it up. Okay, you the wings. You'll see you get it in there and kind of pluck out any feathers that might be underneath. And then you just down the feathers. So, so all these feathers will go up over it real easy anyway. And the wings aren't going to be that high anyway. They're going to be about like this. It's going to be a, that's all proportioning. Yeah, I basically anchored it just like I did the wings. I put a point on the end of my wire, push it up on there, then I made a loop in it, and I went in, well, I went in right here. Just below the, where these feathers can go up and everything. And that was purposely that I went through right there. Now this wing is going to be down like this anyway. About like that. These feathers are going to be flayed out. Probably going to be down a little bit lower. Probably going to be about like this. This head's going to be straight up, of course. And so we got a little bit of, this tail's going to be spread out a little bit. You want to, I like a good spread out tail. His, his feet and legs are going to be, maybe out a little bit to the side. Yeah, we're proportioning first and then we'll let him dry. He'll be a good looking bird. Okay, I like to cut off this excess wire sticking out of the bottom of the feet. I'll bend it up where I can get a good snap on it. Just anything that will There we are. So I can pull the foot through. There we are. It doesn't even show that much. The same thing to the other side. There we are. 
on these feet. You know, I like to make them both about the same. Yeah, it's pretty close. Add a little bit of character to them. Maybe bend them right here at the elbow just a little bit. You know, just a little. Just to give it a little bit of character. Then I may want to bend the bottom of the foot a little, just to add a little bit more character. Okay, bend that a little bit. That's been a little bit. I could go like on a goose or something, or a bigger bird. I'll use heavier cardboard. You know, like a bigger bird or something. You know, I'll use something like a, you know, the cardboard that you get your stuff in, like, like from a taxidermy box, like a McKinsey box or something. I'll use a cardboard for that to do the feet, like on a goose or something. But for a small bird like this, and how soft those little feet are, I'll just, uh, Yeah, I'll reuse my cardboard for stuff like this, you know. You're gonna spread the feet out like this and pin it to the cardboard. That way your feet will have a good full spread on them. I'll just use whatever pin I wanna use. But I'll spread that foot out, put my cardboard in there. And to keep it spread, I'll put a pin through it. Just on the inside of that toe, So that'll keep the foot spread on that side. And I do the same thing to the other foot. Spread it out. Go on the inside of the toe. And there you have it. You've got a good fully spread foot. And if you want it to cup in a little bit more like this, a lot of times I'll stick a pin through the cardboard, even, you know, to make sure it stays kind of cut. Okay, so I got the pins in there, I want them cut. You know, I'll uh, get a bigger pin. That will give you your, kind of your diameter, sort of. And if you gotta put another pin or two in it, you can. I might wanna put one there. Well, and this toenail, if you want that toenail to stick out, you know, as it dries, the next day or so, it'll be, you'll just be able to stick it out. And you do the other one the same way. What that does, it well, so your foot don't dry, all just uh, dry together. You know, you want it to have a little bit of a natural flow. You may want it to be I like that where, where it shows a little bit. That looks pretty good. Can you do the other foot the same way? I got a little bit of floor wire. It's just real thin green wire. If you get it at Walmart, it's about the diameter of like bread wrapper wire, except it doesn't have paper on it. But a lot of times I want to, a lot of times I start by kind of like tying off the primary, kind of like where I sort of want it to kind of go as far as 
as far as how wide the wings are spread. But I have to admit, something else to consider is how much wing damage you got from the from the hunter. That can determine you know, how wide you want your wings. Because if you can cover up a missing feather or two, you know, if your wings aren't like completely spread out and make it look uh, a lot more natural. I've got a little bit of wire on there just kind of kind of dictating, you know, how, uh, how wide I want my wings. I'll do the same thing to this one. This one's got a little damage, but it, I think it's got most, if not all, it's feathers. I guess what I'm getting at is a lot of times you gotta, you might have to position the feathers a certain way so it doesn't look as bad. You know, if you've got some uh, feather damage problems. Now, this is just me. I, I tend to do this. I'll uh, go through one of those primaries, put it in a place where I know a feather can cover over it, maybe, and I'll twist it a couple times to kind of brace it up. Or I'll tie them off with a little bit of button thread or something. Or just something to kind of keep the wings stretched out. And what I like to do, I like to run, I like to have my feathers something to lay on so that they're good and flat. So what I'll do is I'll uh, get more of my 16 gauge wire or 18. I think this is 16. And you want to make sure you got enough to kind of go into the body and go around on the end, and I do. And I cut a point on on one end. So go into the body. I kind of straighten it up a little bit. And I want the feathers to ride on top of the back. So I let that determine kind of where, where I go in with that's plenty good enough right there. Yeah, I'm going about right there. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll even uh, bend it up a little bit. And then, you know, after I bend it up a little bit, then I'll go down with it like this. Make sure your downy feathers are out of the way real good and But I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard on top of this wire. The wire is something for not only the feathers to ride on, but also the cardboard. I 
Okay, I want this to ride up under the feathers. And I'll even go up on top of the back with it. Let's see what it looks like underneath. That's perfect. There we are. And I'll get some tape and run, run underneath this cardboard to make sure it doesn't move. I've got some tape here, about the same diameter as the cardboard, but I think I'm good. Just cut off what you think you can manage under there, and then I put it directly onto the cardboard. I don't go all the way up against to the body, really, per se. It won't stick to your fingers. Make sure everything's like how you want it. Basically what you're doing, you're taping the wire underneath. See how it's running right down the center of the cardboard? Basically all I'm doing is running that wire underneath. Or running the tape underneath to connect the wire to the cardboard. We're building a foundation so we can set our feathers like how we want them. Now, in, in a, a lot of times you can get away with just using you know, a little bit of tape. Sometimes you don't have to car everything, in other words, but it depends on how fresh the bird is, how long you let it sit before you got to him, all that stuff plays into Just run you a piece of wire under there and you know to get the wing where you want it and uh, then we're gonna set them like how they need to be. Same thing on this end. Find an inconspicuous spot, usually back around the wing somewhere, and stick it in where you know it's going to be secure. You can tie off the string or full wire or Bread wrapper wire, whatever you want to use. Just make sure it's doing what you want it to do. The wire kind of take a little bit of concentration ahead of time to make sure you I'm using string on this one. It really don't matter. Anything will work. If you're satisfied, with how your wire is, just time off. Okay, here we are.
A lot of people just use tape and get to be done with it, but you know, I like things good and flat if possible. Kind of like a mess stuff. Ends up on the back too bad. I'll you know, just uh, there we are. I don't like much gaps. When I mount them, some people do. I guess, you know, birds are all different. Some people mount them where there's a little gap where these are out to the side a little bit. But I like them flush with the body. I like to not be able to see any clearance when I look down from the top. It just seems like it just uh, makes a cleaner looking mount. To me, it does. And I just get my tape. Start taping everything. Okay, now I start uh, start separating everything how I want it. We got T pins that will where we taped everything and anchored it in. It's uh everything's gonna stay where you put it. And I'm also going to reinforce it with uh, with more tape on top, which I don't mind doing once we get the feathers where we where we want them, you know. Those are pretty good looking right there. My main worry is down here where so there's a feather missing right here. So I'm going to try my best. Probably better to use this thinner diameter pitch. Not sure of the exact name, but they got little yellow heads on them, little ball pins. But since I got a missing feather there, I'm gonna try to cover it up by by doing that. Push this one up a little bit more. Right here. Kind of get the idea. This feather doesn't need to overlap, of course. That's actually better. There we are. Okay, the very leading primary feather is always the one that is the A little shot damage here that's sometimes you gotta deal with what you gotta deal with. 
And this helps, and you can also do it when you're when you're taping a little bit. You can also uh, fix a lot of this stuff. You know, that's you know, like maybe shot damage showing. But you can do you can do little things to cover stuff up. Oh, that one's messed up pretty bad. Okay. These thin diameter pins are the seem to be the way to go. What it is, it, it helps you separate it, and then you just run back there with uh, just run back with the tape, flatten everything out. Maybe even put more cardboard on top. I used to do that a lot. I get up to, towards the base of the feather as much as possible to kind of keep it from showing so much. It's another old trick. Okay, they look separated pretty good. I'm gonna go with this right here. And when this is all flattened out, it's gonna look a lot, lot better. Bring all this, this will all come out. Look a lot better. I'm gonna do one wing and then I'll show you how to do the other one. I just got me some tape. Something that I know will come off. This is transparent tape. So I'm kind of just flatten everything down. Let's go straight across even. Flatten everything down. So I can even go over this with cardboard on this back side. Just to make sure everything's good and flat. I've been known to do it before. See any feathers that are maybe not doing what they're supposed to do. Now is a good time to kind of preen them in, I guess. The good thing about this tape, it just comes right off. But it, it's what sets your feathers, the tape is. So, like right here, some of the feathers are kind of popping back. So right here on the end. Forcing it to lay down. And then you want to Put a couple of pieces together. Flatten everything out. You can I mean, it's all going to come off anyway. So you're not hurting anything. Just setting the feathers in place. Then you can even take the pins back out if you wanted to. Because they'll, you know, the tape's holding everything like how you want it. So you go down here, throw some tape. Now we don't even need these feathers anymore. I don't need these pins anymore. 
Not feathers. Don't need these pins anymore. Tape secure the other side, do it the same way. Uh, I don't like gaps between, uh, you know, feathers and and bodies much. You know, let's see. And this one goes up. Well, that looks pretty good. I may have to flatten the feathers out because they'll they'll just they'll mesh to the cardboard so much better. I may do it anyway just for the heck of it. All you do is put a piece of cardboard on there and pin it through the other piece of cardboard. And what it does is sandwiches the feathers down, flattens them out. Yeah, I'm gonna flatten him out right here. That's where he's gonna be flattened. I'll pull these out. There's nothing saying you can't sandwich all these feathers together, you know, put some pins through there.
See that one's bowing up a little bit? Well, it's, it's just an easy fix just to flatten it out with a piece of cardboard. As many pins as you need. I'm going to do the other side the same way. Okay, yeah, it's kind of bowing out a little bit. I mean, it's probably natural. A lot of people don't mess with it, but I like a good flat wing. I like total control over what I'm doing. And the best way is to Stick you some cardboard on there and flatten everything out. After on the end, you can put some through. Just want to make sure everything's good and flat. If you get any loud feathers, put a little bit of tape on it. What I mean by loud feathers is any feathers that are just like bubbling up and they're not flat. Put a little bit of tape on there. Flatten out those feathers.
and then preen to make sure everything's all pretty. I'll kind of peel up on the end of the cardboard because I don't want it to leave an imprint, an impression there. You know, on the back, you know, like an indention, like where the cardboard flattened the feathers out or whatever. So now I'll just kind of bend them up, just on the ends there. I'll move this one. On this tail, seems like somebody could do like they would a turkey or a or a fit or you know or a, or a pheasant or something you know basically what I'm getting at is uh, stick a piece of cardboard under there if I wanted a good flat tail I probably want a good fan on my bird if I can get it so I may uh, you know within reason you know that looks good so I'll get little pieces of tape kind of help me on my way Let's see, that goes here. Okay, that one goes here. That goes there. That looks pretty good. That goes there, that goes there. Pretty good and spread right there now. There we are. Okay. See what other kind of tail feathers we got under here. Oh, that's it. Okay. That made it a lot easier. That probably goes like that. And that goes like that. Sometimes it didn't hurt to kind of work these feathers out a little bit. Go ahead and spread them ahead of time. Makes life a lot easier. I like these pretty feathers to show right here. I want those going underneath. We got 
got that one, and we got this one. And that one. And that one. Oops. And then that one. Well, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, that goes on top, like that. There we are. That'll bring right back in once that takes off. Here we are, right like that. They can be spread out like that. They can be spread out like that. Kind of, kind of working it out a little bit. They're getting a little stiff, so I'm helping them out. It goes like that. Okay. Let's see. I want it to spread basically just like it does on this other side here. I mean, it's doing the same thing on both sides, so. That looks pretty even. That'll work. All this stuff will preen right out too. There we are. Goes underneath like that. Perfect, that's a good little spread right there. I even like the way it's kind of a little bit downward angled. I've seen a lot of other people doing that way. Make sure these little golden hairs are out on the ends. I guess that's what they're called. Little golden hairs. Want those out for sure. Got these pretty side feathers too that we got to deal with. Got to make those look good.
so it looks good to me. a person could go in the back with this it's a little bit extreme it's what I've used for a pheasant all it is is a piece of cardboard with a piece of wire stapled and glued to it as you can tell it's just a cheap little way of, you know I'm, it's how I do my flying turkey birds flying pheasants and flying turkeys sometimes the ducks have trouble sticking that in there in the back I like the way it looks right now anyway. That looks good just like it is. But if it wasn't, you'd use pins to push the skin where you want it and then just push that skin into that clay. That's kind of what I got going on on this side, unfortunately. Not bad though. A lot of times you'll have a little bit of like downy feathers under the eye. You just get a sharpie pen and darken that back up. I'll show you that later you know, when he's done. Well, this was a good, I proportioned everything right on this one because uh don't have to do nothing. And that's always pretty good. Well, I mean, I know I got to get the feathers on the head straight. They're a little messed up. You want to do this before it dries. And I'll sink down as far as I can to the head, make sure there's no feathers in there. And snip it off. And then, uh, of course, feathers will go right over that. And yeah, you want this to kind of all, all this here kind of fluffs up. Some of these hair patterns look pretty good already. Reference pictures help with everything, you know, eye, shape of the eyes, everything. I'm just trying to get a little body in the top of his head here.
Well, this is just temporary, but yeah, I'll just kind of work him as he dries. But yeah, this is a this is what I've got. Now we just let him dry. Even an open mouth looks kind of good. But what I got here, I got just a hair bit. My goal is to just kind of fill it in, maybe like right about right there a little bit. Just to puff him up just a little. I'm gonna leave it up to you if you think he needs it or not. Okay, just wanted to swell him out a little bit. That's good, right there, just like that. I have used a drop of super glue and I have done this. And then just let him dry. Now I just kind of watch over him and uh, watch over him as he dries, kind of work him and, you know, preen the feathers a little bit, maybe fluff up his head feathers a little bit more get feathers to match up. The feathers underneath may not be good and flat like they are on top. So I'll get more feathers flat by going underneath with a strip of tank. Just to kind of help them where they don't buckle so much. Now I try to avoid getting what I don't want to get, but it helps. Oh yeah. Yeah, it flattened them out considerably. Do the same thing on this side, of course. There we are. Yeah, it just flattened everything out. Perfect. There we are. Now we let it dry and just take everything off and finish him out. Yeah, I still kind of want a little bit of the uniformity with these, you know, uh, these side feathers. Try to keep everything looking good if I can. But if I wanted, I could stick like a little, I guess like a little hanger up in there through the butt, just like I do on uh, grouse and turkey and all that to keep the tail feathers from sagging. Well, I ended up kind of wanting that tail to go up a little bit, so I ended up stuffing some little grocery bags under there. Now I got a few cotton balls I can't I 
won't take long. It's pretty hot in here, but oh, that looks perfect. Little tape kind of tape stuff in, so I don't want to come out per se. There you go. Just use the legs for a little bit of leverage and got me a nice looking duck tail here. I'm just gonna let him dry. I'm gonna start just taking everything out. All our pins. It's been a couple of weeks. So he's had plenty of time to dry. I'm going to start taking everything apart. You can shorten this too, by the way, and get a lot, lot closer to the wall. And when I get this stuff off, I usually want to go in the direction that the feather is facing downward. And usually just a Just a quick pull. Oops. It'll stick to paper real good, but not the feathers. See that? You just work on taking everything off. Any place you might have tied with the wire or string or whatever. Let's see. Sort of pull right out. Still preen everything, you know. Make everything good and nice like you want it. show try to get as good a bite as I can on that wing wire so I'll bend it down where I can get to it try not to get any feathers in the way or anything I'll snip that up as far as I can into the body or into the wing finish him out you know tape above his around his legs so you can paint him just get a little masking tape right there where the feathers in now I'll just go around. You got my tape. Cut a little bits off. Okay, like get around in here. A lot of times you got little angles. See, like right here in that corner of the tape, you can take it one side of the beak. Like that. This can sort of take up the other side. You just want to control the overspray as good as you can so you don't have to clean up so much. Kind of the part that kind of goes in, just use one corner of the tape and use the other corner of the tape for the other side. What I'm doing here is I'm going to take all that wire that I had in there, I'll back it all out. Got a couple of spikes here. You just, uh, Pop them on there like that. Move the feathers out of the way. Oh, well, they're about uh, two and a half inches long, enough to go almost to the body. Got a little bit of wood glue. I guess just any kind of glue. I'm putting it on the end here. That way when I go through the body, it's gonna stay on there. Could be just, just like that. And it's not going to go anywhere. It's on there. Paint him out and he'll be good to go. I got a little uh, Sharpie pen. See, there's like little downy feathers around there. I should be able to darken them with a Sharpie pen and uh, get rid of them. Yeah, you do the same thing with the feet. You just strategically put the tape in a way that's... Uh, 
you know, sometimes you can get under the toes a little bit or whatever, you know, to control overspray. It's, it's masking tape to what you use, but I got a little bit of gauze tape and I'm just using it up. And I figured this is the perfect time to use it up. It's not doing me any good for anything else. Get as close as you can to the feet without interfering with where the paint's gonna go. Well, one thing I noticed about the feet, they're, uh, the webbing part, look how dark it is. Uh, it looks like the toes are the main thing they are yellow. Maybe a little bit on the webbing, but for the most part, yeah, they look pretty darn dark. But I'll look at reference pictures anyway to make sure I paint them right. Yeah, this guy ended up being covered up pretty good, but that's what you gotta do when you paint the beak. A little bit of base coat sealer. Put it all over the beak, put it all over your feet. Tape where the legs connect to the body. Maybe put it strategically in a way where it comes off real easy. It'll help you from having to do all that clean up with a lacquer thinner and a Q-tip, but if you got to, you got to, but it helps to put tape around it uh, pretty good, you know, if you can. You know, a lot of people will use uh, stuff like, uh, you know, bird feet injection fluid, and it's good for the feet so they don't shrink up. It's a preservative. Well, the first color is gonna be yellow ochre, and uh, you can tell by this back view, there's a lot of yellow, and almost, uh, well, the paint schedule uh, calls for dark brown and then black to make it like it's in between brown or black, but a lot of people just go straight black. Yeah, here's another example right here. It looks, looks black to me. You know, they're on the toes and everything. Yeah, notice on here, the, uh, the darkness that's in the front. You know, I've got my yellow ochre, and the first thing I'm going to try to paint, see that yellow on the beak? See how it comes up right along the very back of the beak? And right there at the point, it's probably its thickest part. And then it narrows down again right before you get to the center. And you do both sides that way. I got my spray down. There's the yellow. Now, now we get the legs. Very good in making a good yellow. And some of this stuff's gonna be black anyway. So you probably don't have to put a whole lot on it. You might want to put a little bit in the middle. Yeah, I can still see the kind of the, the black rings where they went. I guess it's not wrong to just get what's yellow and get it, make it more yellow. Maybe leave what's black and black. And of course, use reference pictures, which kind of helps. It's black right there, like right there at the base of the, where the heel meets the front of the foot. And even if you do paint what's supposed to be black, you can still incorporate it in. You know, dark brown or black, either one, they're really good colors. You're doing stuff like that. Uh, this is kind of detail work. I'm getting probably in between the toes. It looks like there may be a trace of it on the, on the webbing. The same thing on the other side. Right in there. And now I've got white, 
But I can already see what's supposed to be white. See, it also goes around the nostril. It goes around the nostril, curves around. Okay, well, they differ on the red on them. It does differ. But you can see the white, how it, the nail kind of protrudes on top. It protrudes. There's like a point in there. And then, but you know, where the gill red takes in at the bottom. That's what I, I'm, I'm getting at is just the the nature of the, the nail, you know, the end of the beak. And, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and brighten that white up a little bit more. Yeah. Well, this is what I got so far on the side, just using white. That's kind of what he looks like from the front. And you can see the black, uh, it's got a little bit of white misted on it. And uh, I'm going to darken it up with a Sharpie pen. Well, come to think of it, I think I'll put the gill red on first. I'm following the red along the base of the upper beak. And you can see kind of like a, a little place where the color change is. You can see a, like a wrinkle or something. You know, right where the red meets the white. Just ever so slightly. And of course, you know, I'm a using a brush so I can do the fine intricate details of where the red goes in, compare, in comparison to the white and the yellow, you know, the yellow being on one side and of course the white on the other. And I may try to blend the stuff up in a little bit better where it doesn't look so fake, but I'm gonna do the best I can. So right now what I'm gonna do is get right there and try to go and meet the, see where the upper beak and the lower beak kind of meet. Um, I'm going to try to make there. Every wood duck is different. See, check this one out. This is the one I'm using. Is this one right here. Ugh. We didn't do super good on that. It's all right. The bottom part of this beak gets black also. I have to touch it up with white again. Control if I just make one solid straight line with my brush. Good as I can get on that. I got my sharpie pen here. Kind of got that how I want it, like right here. Now right along here. All this down here gets black. Anything that's a blow, blow the beak there. And the angle I am, it looks like I got a, a bad spot where I painted it white, but it's not. It's just the, it's just the angle. See, sharp pin on the bottom. Now I'm going to go up top and uh, take care of that. Yeah, I think I'll be happy with a little bit of uniformity there. Um, let's see, I've got a little, 
You can see how it is. What it's like on one side is like on the other side. I'll get what I know is black first. If you do it on one side, you want to do it on the other. There we are. Fairly good to me. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Now, if you want, you can use your airbrush with real low pressure and go around all this black to kind of fade it out where it's not so crisp looking, I guess you could say, around the edges. Same with the gill red and everything else. You just have to adjust your pressure down on your, on your airbrush, and you can take care of everything that way. But it helps to have a steady hand, I'll tell you that. Okay, what I'm going to do is take all this masking tape off and then clean up my overspray with a, a lacquer thinner on a q-tip what i'll do is i'll make a gentle rolling motion and i go with the feather you'd be surprised you can get right up to the edge Right here in the middle, I sure messed up right there. That's pretty good right there, though. Right here on the outer edge, wow. Kind of messed up there. Yeah, you just do a gentle, gentle motion like this. And look, I am right... Yeah, rolling motion is what it takes. And it really does... Get that yellow off on every one of those like knuckle areas you can still see it a little bit um i've got my black right here in front of the toenail there's a little bit even on the very tip of the toenail right here on the tip of the toenail Up a little bit. There on the reference picture and let that determine kind of how you do stuff you don't want to go too hard with it but well, they're pretty much dark anyway just, just go ahead and kind of tint it out a little bit go like that like that like that To the backs as well. And then a lot of it's got darkness anyway. That's dark. Even the top of the leg a little bit. Where it comes down from the body, that's a little bit dark. Like where that where it comes out of the body. Yeah. This part right here. Where the joint is. The knee joint. Behind that's a little bit dark. And of course underneath is dark. Where the bottom of the feet are. And then I let it go up a little and then fade out. Fade out from the back of the foot a little bit. That's how I do it. I do all my birds that way. And I'm done there. Trying to brighten up the legs a little bit. I've got a little bit. I don't know. They just seem too dark for me. Let it determine, let you determine how good you think you need to get those claws. Um, a lot of people say you've got to build that upper and lower eyelid 
Um, you can buy them already. You know, the eyelids that come with the eyes. I think it's a Wayne Cooper, maybe. And what it is is the skin kind of stretch fits around it. And you've already got your eyelid made up and your eye just goes in it. And I've used them. They look really good. But if you don't have that, you can use Sculpt Ball or Epoxy Sculpt and make your eyelids. I mean, they got to be minute. Go all the way around. As small as you can get it pretty much is about what you want. I remember in the olden days, a lot of people didn't worry about it. And they'd be done. You know, depends on how much you're getting paid for. And the customers would be happy with it just like it is. Okay, you want to make sure your eyelids cleaned off good? Not eyelids, eyes. Sorry, apologize. And believe it or not, there is a little bit of a, a eyelid still. I mean, it, it's dried up, but it's still there. There is a remnant of eyelids. I mean, it's not all completely dried up. It's still there. And uh, it looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of gloss. What I'll do is go ahead and get these eyes Good and glossy, satin sheen gloss. And then just go over the the legs all over from underneath. Uh, probably should have waited before I took the tape off, but I'm not worried about it. A lot of people attach plants, you know, staple them on or glue them on or whatever you got to do. You know, use sheet moss and stuff and pretty it up real good. Oh yeah, you also want to get the beak. Totally forgot. Again, that satin sheen. Well, I'd go ahead and preen the feathers and call it a, a done deal. This is the way I mount a standing duck. In this case, a wood duck. They all have different paint schedules, but they mount the same way. Oh well, yeah, don't forget to take the tape off. You know, when you've done your legs and your beak and all that stuff. I've got epoxy school, and it's a two-part epoxy, and it's what I use on my deer heads and everything. It's gonna mix two equal parts with, uh, I'm gonna try a lacquer thinner instead of water. I just like the idea of using something that dries quick instead of something that saturates, you know, like water. We've got two parts equal lacquer thinner, and I just got a little bit of... I flattened it out and put a little bowl in the middle of it, and then I'll just mix that lacquer thinner in with it, and you'll see it, it'll melt it down, make it real good and soft so you can work with it. I guess the bad thing about using lacquer thinner you have to use gloves and probably not using gloves can come in real handy with doing stuff like this. It says to make two equal. I know it's real almond shape. So that's what I've got so far.
Looks like some of this has got to be cut off. Especially in the front right here. You want the almond shape. We can kind of fold the ends over a little bit, kind of fix it up a little bit. Hmm. Stuff is not easy to work with. Push it back.
struggling pretty good. It's looking okay anyway. Go over it a little bit and just kind of round it down. Of course, not got a lot of ridges on it. Took too much off up there. There we go. I've never done this before. I usually don't do it, but you got to live and learn, right? Yeah, it's got to be close, folks. You're just going to make a little, you want it to look like little, I don't know, bubbles kind of? Not really bubbles, like little bumps going all the way around.
We're going to reshape it up with my Q-tip. Well, that's what I got. And then I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then paint it. If you got places where you, you know, like, uh, well, I use a Sharpie pen getting like maybe some of the white downy feathers that are showing around the eyelid. It's happened a lot. See, now I've got my gill red. And I'm just, Takes very little. I'm just using what's in the on the cap with the smallest brush I've got. And I tell you, it's a small. One. Sorry, I'm going to get in the way. get a little bit of lacquer thinner on my q-tip and clean my eyelid off flatten in it out a little bit so it'll help me out that looks okay to me Maybe I'm gonna scrape some of that red paint off with an exacto knife, but it is red on red. I don't know how noticeable it is. Like right here. I 
I'd leave well enough alone. You now I got gloss top coats. I just want to gloss those eyes real good. And then, now I got my satin sheen gloss. It's not as strong as gloss top coat. I just want to put a, a good satin finish on the legs. Now, since I already mounted him on here, I'm probably going to have to take him, pick him up. Actually, is the best way. To gloss his feet and everything. And the beats. The other eye. Heck, even under the boot. There you are. Well, there you have it. Not too bad. Not too shabby.